Let's go ahead and show yourself on camera so everybody can see you and you can see everybody. Uh, they, she's going to do it. Uh, Can you see that, Dr. Truesdale? Leah Green. And this is my Noble Bill project. Um, the person I did was Reverend Natalie McLean. She's a Bennett graduate of 1980. She serves as the chaplain and ACES coordinator. Um, Reverend McClain chose Ben because of her mother, that's a 1954, who brought in her. She asked her to go to Bennett, and if she didn't like it, she can transfer to another college. So Reverend McClain, she went to Bennett her first year, made good friends and good grades. Her sophomore year, she took her mother word and transferred it to ASU, a large WI in the mountains of North Carolina, where her brother was a student. After a year, she realized ASU was much too large for her, and she needed more structure with a more personal education experience. So she went back to Bennett and graduated in 1980. Um, some of her fun facts was enjoying photography, love nature, um, enjoy creating colorful and inviting presentations. She enjoyed cooking and home makeover shows. She also made beautiful and tasty salads. She traveled alone to Jamaica for a vacation, climbed a portion of Domes River Falls, and rode a boat sail through a tourist. Um, her brother, who lives near Miami, she drove to Florida Keys. Um, when Reverend Khan came to Bennett, she wanted to be a, a either a kindergarten teacher a, or a pediatrician. Ultimately, she majored in biology with the hope of becoming a pediatrician. During her senior year, she took a research class that led her to for sure a career in Ben changed Reverend McLean life by helping her to find her voice and enhancing the social graces for her family her family installed. Bennett had given her a deeper appreciation for the lives, calling, and contrib contributions of women, particularly women of color. Bennett indeed her has given her sisterhood for life. the early admission program, which meant as a high school junior, she entered without having to complete her senior year. She earned her Master of Science in Biology from North Carolina a and State University. She answered the call of God to preach the word. She is an ordained minister. She served as the Director of edu Christian Education and the Assistant Pastor of Providence Baptist Church, Greensboro, North Carolina. Also, her memorable moment is spending time in the parlor of player hall, talking with friends or sitting up all night in a sister's room laughing together. Having a young man come to her residence hall and page her for a, for a date, fun night, senior day, Sunday brunch. This is a picture of her. And my site work was a personal interview that I did with her. Aaliyah, I do have a question for you. So is she still alive right now? Is she currently alive? 
Yes, she is. <laughs> she's the chaplain here at the college. Okay. Yeah, she's the chaplain. And in fact, she will be presenting next week. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Uh-huh. You're a black person getting ready. Um, no, thank you. I'm sorry. You're still mute yourself. You're... My bad. Okay, so Nakia is asking, how long did the interview last? Aaliyah with Reverend McLean. It didn't last long. I typed up some um, questions, emailed it to her, and she emailed me back. Uh, it wasn't that long. Uh, okay. Okay, and someone wants to know what were some things that you learned um, while interviewing Reverend McLean? Okay. So another student wants to know, was interviewing Reverend McLean better than doing the research? Aaliyah, if I was you, I would just type it in the chat because you're breaking up really bad. Um, Okay. Thank, thank you, Aaliyah. You can break it up. Uh, very enjoyed it. Yeah, as mother done research, I Okay, we ready for next presenter? Who's up, Naja? Cameron Lewis. Okay. I'm also putting it in the chat like when you're next. I got even better. Thank you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So, like, Cameron, don't know how. To... Say that again. So, like, I'm trying to share my screen, but like, what are you sharing it off of? Um, Google. So go to the bottom where it says in green screen share. Mm -hmm. Then hit that. Yeah, but like it pops up like, what's it called? So up top it says like share content. That's what you're supposed to press. Yeah, and then after that it says there's options like screen, photos, oh, our, share, our cloud. Share, share PowerPoint, make sure your PowerPoint's open. If you open up, is it, or did you do it in PowerPoint? Well, yeah, but like it's on, um, Google. Hit share screen. Yeah. And then it'll share like your whole entire screen and then just go to Google from there. Yeah, you can either share the whole screen, which would be your first option, or you could hit onto Google. You're on your phone, right? No, I'm on my iPad. So like if I hit share screen, the thing that pops up is like screen recording and then it pops up with like like choices like um Turn your like, iPad to the side for a second, because we can't, so we can see you, see you in the through the whole window. Okay, and then who else has used an iPad? 
So, okay, so hit this, what is, when it says share screen, then what does it say? So like, okay. So like if I hit share screen, what pops up is like the screen recording thing and then it pops up with like, fo like photos, messenger, Zoom, or Gmail. What if you hit Zoom? I hit Zoom or Gmail. Try hitting Zoom. There you go. All right. There you go. Make, make sure you have all the noise turned off in the background too. Might have to. All right, can you, can you guys see? Yeah, if you hit the play button or like that little triangle, it should get you to show the full thing thing. There you go. Okay, so um, I did Miss Doan as my bell. Well, first, let me start off with my introdu introduction. So my name is Cameron. Um, I'm an income. I'm a fresh woman with a made um, my major is social work with a minor in psychology, and I'm from Durham, North Carolina. So I did my notable bell on Miss Dome. Um, I chose Miss Dome because she's my success coach, and I'm very interested in her journey. And we also have a lot in common, and she's a very understanding person with the outgoing personality. Um, and she had a her major. She had a double major in English and interdisciplinary studies with a minor in political science. And. Um, how did she overcome her struggles at Bennett? Like she found herself, like she was very involved in clubs and organizations on campus and she was in SGA and she was in the choir at Bennett. Um, she had like a mental, like for her mental health issues, she, um, what's it called? She was like a perfectionist. So she was always cautious about how she did things. She wanted everything to be perfect. And she was very anal about everything as well. Um, how long she's been at Bennett. She was at Bennett from 2002 to 2009. So she was at Bennett for seven years and she went straight into a grad program after she graduated and her GPA was a 3.6 when she did when she graduated. Yep, that, that's, that's it. Okay, why don't you, uh, do you have time to field a question or two? So let's see if let's see if somebody posted a question to the chat. You you have time to field a question or two, and then we'll get on to the next presenter. Next is Janae Jones. Okay. Any anything? What's the favorite thing you and Miss Stone have in common? Um. Okay. Well, we both we both like. I mean, are kind of perfectionists like. I want everything to be a certain way as well. And I want to get everything, I want everything to be perfect. Like, we both know that um, what we do in school, like what we do in school is, like, how do I, how do I explain it? Like, we know that we, we have more like, I don't know how to explain it, but like we can reach our, poten our potential. Like, we know that a C, or whatever is not good enough. Like we know we could do better than a C or a D or even a B. Well, I like that you, uh, I like that you found that out about Miss Stone. I didn't know she had made such a, what like, so it sounded like, sounded like she really turned her academic career and this kept getting better as she went. Miss Stone, you want to say anything? I noticed you're on the call. Do you want to say anything about that presentation? Yes, I would say great job, Karen. So um, the anal part, that was a direct quote. So, um, you know, I, I see I'm going to have to work on our little citations and, and all that, you know, since that's a part of me being a perfectionist. <laughs> and and um, also the seven years was by choice. So it, it was not that I came in and I was repeating classes and, um, things like that. I want to, you know, address that because Cameron put in her presentation that Bennett was where I found myself. And that is so true. 
And so in finding myself, I made sure that I took advantage of all that college had to offer. So, <laughs> so the seven year piece was definitely by choice. So, but thank you, Cameron. That was a great job. You You're welcome. Sure. Okay, thank you, Cameron. And then to our audience, put, put in a question for Cameron to answer or otherwise put something else you'd like to learn about her research. And then we're gonna move on to Janae Jones. Okay, so Samantha had asked, did I learn more about her? Did learning more about her inspire you as you began your college career? So the answer to your question is yes. Um, like, she inspires me to like, take everything slow, but like, Like, don't, don't stress yourself out as much about your academics and use your resources because you're not alone. That, that's great advice for everybody. So thank you, Cameron. If you want to answer some of those other questions, you can do that in the chat. And we're going to get started with Janae Jones. Janae, you can go ahead and share your screen. And remember, when you're presenting, when you see your face, that's a helpful presenter, you know, to be able to interact with the audience. I don't know my most interesting fact about her voice. I also don't know why she chose a double major. Is Sinead here? Sinead here? No, she's not here. Okay, so if Sinead's not here, who's up next on the list, Nigel? I'm next. Ontario. Ontario's in New Africa, Ontario. Legionnaire. Legionnaire. Okay, awesome. Ontario, share your screen, Ontario. Okay, can I start now? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do my minute introduction. My name is Monteria Reeves. I am a French woman. I will be majoring in social work. And I am from I am from Wilmington, North Carolina, but I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. And this is my presentation. So the person I chose was um, Miss Tonya Dome, just like Cameron. And the reason I chose Miss Tonya Dome is because I felt like I could relate to her in many ways. And that's the person, like, I'm, when I first, like, what I say? introduce myself to, like, professors or, like, like she is a success coach, she made me feel welcome. So that's why I chose her. So Ms. Dawn graduated Bennett College in 2009. She had a double major. Her major was English and interdisciplinary studies with a minor in political science. And she graduated with two degrees. Um, her family background, Ms. Dawn is a native of Washington, DC. Her father was a licensed pilot Ms. Dome, when um, her education, she always been in private schools, Catholic, um, Christian schools, up to her middle school, up to middle school. And her, both of her high schools and middle school, sorry, both of her middle schools and high schools was dominantly white and it was very large. Mm. What made Ms. Tonya Dome choose Bennett College? Ms. Dawn always wanted to go to a HBCU. Her mom and dad both attended a HBCU, just like she did. At first, um, Ms. Dawn wanted to go to Spelman College, but she looked around and she saw Bennett College and that fits, she knew that was it for her and it fit best for her. How has Bennett College shaped Ms. Dawn into the woman she is today? Bennett College made Ms. Dawn a strong black woman that she is today and very straightforward. 
And I will say, I will correct that. Ms. Bennett, uh, Bennett College chose Ms. Doan. So she helped herself become the woman she is today, even though Bennett did, but she helped herself become that woman. And I would say um, Bennett made her more independent as talking to her, myself talking to her. Um, when I was talking to her, she was saying that you get out of things you put into. So what she was saying that Bennett College can prepare you to go forward and do whatever you want to do. Accomplishments that Bennett earned from her life. Ms. Dawn was a member of the Honor Society for International Studies. Ms. Dawn was a part of the AFS Club, the African American Club. And it's an article about her online. I put the link on the references too. Um, the article is just saying how, you know, how she contributed to the club and how good she was. And another accomplishment she made, she was a co-coordinator for the Bennett, um, the Bennett Banner, and she was a part of the choir at Bennett College. Important and fun facts. Ms. Dawn had an in interest in social justice. Ms. Dawn met hidden figure Catherine Jones and Catherine Joan um, Johnson also, her daughter was a Bennett Bell. And Dr. Brown was once her mentor and professor. And as a student at Bennett College, Ms. Doan met people like Danny Glover, Dr. S Esther Terry, and et cetera. And that's um, Catherine Johnson, Ms. Higgins figure. So this slide is about, um, it's a book called Accidents of a Life of a Slave Girl. The book was based on a real story and the author, the author was J Harriet Jacob. So the book was really about a woman, Harriet Jacob, that was abused by her master and the woman was hiding in an attic to, to try to get away from her abuser. So Ms. Doan and Dr. Brown once went to the house that Harriet Jacob was abused and where she was hidden in the attic. This is a um, picture of where Ms. Doan and Dr. Brown went to the house to visit where um, Harriet Jacob was hiding in the attic. Um, favorite memories. Her favorite memory of talking to her was the sisterhood. Um, she loved how she built a relationship with her other Bennett Bells and she felt like it was no judgment ever and she built perfect, well, good relationships. Um, career after Bennett College. After graduating from Bennett College, she moved on and pursued her um, career. She worked full-time at Bennett College. She was a success coach at Bennett College. She worked in an emerging scholars program at Bennett College, and she's the lear cur curriculum learning coordinator. And that's it. Okay, very good. Uh, Lachey, can you answer your, ask your question real quick? We got time for one question, Monteria, and then you can finish some of those others in the chat. I said, um, did learning more about her help you connect and slash trust your success coach more? Yes, um, while when talking to her, I had a Zoom meeting with her. I learned um, more about her and I love that she was, real about what she was talking about and I like how she never like should vote anything you know she was being honest to me and that's what I just like so I got to know her more and her honestly as yes, being a success coach all right thank you Monteria let's give some uh reactions either by clapping or doing a virtual clapping in your reactions window and Monteria is going to jump on the chat to answer some of your good questions very good. And next up, we have Lejeune. Lejeune. And then after her is is Shanisha Coles. Okay. Thank you, Nyjah. This is very helpful. Hello, my name is Lejeune Moser Newton, and I'm a fresh woman and my major is African American Studies. And my um, a person is Nick Gwendolyn Maple Rice. Um, 
facts about her, she was born and raised in Mississippi, later moved to Chicago. Her family was involved in the civil rights movement. She was taught not to say yes, ma'am, or no, sir, and not allowed to ride the bus. She was taught to be courageous. Uh, ben Bennett College. Miss Rice went on campus when she was four years old to attend her oldest sister's graduation. Two younger sisters attended Bennett College also. Greensboro Woolworth sit in protest. Bennett Bills planned it and participated. Miss Rice and others were arrested. School involvement, operation, door knobs, registration, people to vote. NAACP president in her senior year students, students council, VP president, honor society. Uh, favorite thing about Bennett is the chapel worship service. She loved, she took ballet. She loves a Bennett College. Beyond Bennett, National Alumni Association, community service organizations, outreach programs, community projects, philanthropic uh, member. And here are my uh, citations. Nakia, can you jump off? You had a good question. Can you jump on audio and ask? Great work, Lee Janae. Nakia, can you ask your question real quick? It's Nakia. I'm sorry, Nakia. Um, Lee Janae, did her story inspire you in any way? Yes, because she's, because uh, I like to register people to vote and she likes, she went out there and registered other people to vote too. Lee Jeanne, why didn't she say yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, or no, ma'am, and no, sir? Um, I think because she was, she wanted to be polite, but I don't think the other, the white people thought it was too polite. Yeah, one thing in those days, y'all, um, the reason that from what, what I understand why somebody would do that is, is that you want to, that, that um, in those days, it wasn't fair for you to have to talk to white people one way and then people of other races another way. So that was part of that too, I think, Lijanae. And what did you like most about her? And then we'll jump on with our next presenter, Ms. Coles. Um, I like how her passion, of how she explained Bennett and what's her favorite part about Bennett and how her sisters went to Bennett also and she became a Ben Bill. Okay, great work. Answer the rest of those questions in the chat, if you could. And let's give her a virtual round of applause. Okay, next up, Coles. After Shanisha is Francie. Let me just say real quick while Shanita jumps on, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of positive feedback in the chat and I appreciate that. That's very helpful to the presenters. Can y'all see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. I had, okay, my name is Shanisha Coles. I am a first woman. Um, I am majoring in education, and my notable belt is Miss Sarah Lou Harris Carter. I chose Sarah because she went to Bennett to get her education. She um, became a teacher, and I want to become a teacher, and, you know, we share that little connection. Also, she did more than just teach, and it made me realize that just because you have your heart set on one thing doesn't mean you can't do another. 
She was born July 4th, 1923 in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Her parents were Esther and James Harris. She was the oldest child and she graduated top of her high school class and received a full ride to Bennett College at 15 years old. She graduated from Bennett the year of 1943. After Bennett, Sarah returned to her hometown and began to teach third grade for a year. Then she moved to New York to further her education and attended the University of Columbia. Also, while attending the University of Columbia, in order to pay for her college, she decided to start acting and modeling. As her career in modeling and acting branched out, a lot of people realized, you know, like she was good at what she was doing. So she ended up becoming the first black female mo model at a top notch buyer's fashion show in New York. And she was also a part of the original brand for Lovelace. And these are some words from her. Well, I think, you know, as, as women, we need to have a little uh, assurance. We need to have a little, we need to have our own little thing. You know what I mean, Miss Murray? It gives you a little lift if you feel that you can't do something else. I have so often told the young people in the schools, though, that education is the weapon. This is really what you've got to do now. You've got to get a good education and prepare to do something else other than just being a housewife, being a housewife, mind you, is very important. And uh, to be a successful housewife is really an accomplishment. But I think we as women need to be able to do something else to give us a little lift. I think if you can have your career before marriage, that's good. Because I think in the early stages of um, motherhood, you should be at home with your children to get them on a good way. Lady Carter, do you think you would ever give up your career, your extracurricular career? For just to sit home and be a housewife? Well, I don't think I could just sit back and do nothing. I think I would, as long as I can sort of get around it all, Miss Murray, I'd like to, to work with people in some way. My thanks to Lady Carter, wife of the ambassador from Guyana. Haviland, we have a minute. Haviland, could you jump on and just share your thoughts with our presenter, Shanisha? Um, yeah, I do. I kind of like her a lot because I like how she went to college. She went, she acted, and then she started modeling. I think that's like really cool of her to do and really independent. And I feel like she had, she focused on school. And at the same time, she focused on stuff she, she wanted to do at the same time. So I think, I think that's why I like her a lot. Ooh, I froze. Sorry, I froze for a second. Haviland, did something about that presentation make you like her? Yeah, I like, it was like, I guess how, well, well, what I like most about her is how she went to school and then she was modeling and acting at the same time because I felt like, yeah, she knew her education was important, but at the same time, I felt like she was doing something she wanted to do at the same time. Like, she, she said if she wanted to do something, she was going to do it. It wasn't like, was it going to let education stop her for letting her do, for letting her do it. Right. And did Shanisha do a good job of bringing her to you? Good job of um, bringing that out? Okay, Shanisha, nice work. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. Shanisa, don't, don't go off camera because I was noticing you did a good job with that lecture we had yesterday about colors. I noticed you had a cool purple background and you kind of lit, lit, lit yourself in a nice soft light. I like the setup that you have on Zoom. Thank you. Who are, who's our next victim? The next person is Francie. And then Francie. after that okay. is Zydasia. All right, Francie, you're up. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Francie Rawls. My major is computer engineer with a minor in mathematics. I'm from Durham, North Carolina, and I am a fresh woman. This is my Nobel Bell presentation by me. I have a quick question. Does anyone in the audience remember the first 
or Bennett Bells that graduated from Bennett College? No, ma'am. It doesn't ring a bell? <laughs> okay. Well, Miss Alma Tarpley Taylor was one of them. She graduated from Bennett College in 1930. As you see in the image are the first four Bennett Bells that graduated in Greensboro, North Carolina at Bennett College. First story, Alma Taylor was known for multiple names and she was at the top of her class and she was the chief editor in her senior yearbook, The Benedict. She was born in 1992 and died in November 26, 1968. She was also married to James Howard Bicht and had eight kids. Miss Alma attended Bennett College during 1927 through 1930. Another question for the audience. Can you guess what she majored in at Bennett College? Anyone? I'll give you a hint by the image. Journalism? No. Cosmetology? No. Women's studies? No. Something to do with feminism? No, it's at the bottom. English? I can't. Education? Oh, teaching. Teaching? Yes, it was teaching education and liberal arts. Ms. Alma attended Benedict High School which was also located on Bennett's campus as well. Here are some images with her classmates. And she was known as the best around senior. So her achievements and challenges, I put these both together because when you're achieving something, you also go through challenges. She was the first president for the National Alumni Association at Bennett College through 1954 through 1957. As I spoke before the first slide, she went to Bennett College and she got her major in liberal arts in 1930. Also during this time in the 1930s, the Great Depression happened. So imagine you, an African-American woman, going through the Great Depression and straight out of college. The struggle. Okay, my question for her would have been, what has been it look like and what has been it changed during the 19th centuries? So, over here is the boys dorm in the academic building. This is the view of when winter happened. And these are also other images of Bennett. How can I relate to her? So, as you all know, we had to learn the alma mater during Wow Week. And I don't know if she made the song, but you, as you can see, she edited this page in her yearbook. Another thing I can relate with her is that um, her school was sponsored by A&T, mm, and, and um, the St. Matthew's Church was also sponsoring her school at the time at Bennett. And these are my citations. Any questions? Josiah, can you jump on? You've got a good question. Can you, we probably have time for just one, but Josiah, can you jump on and ask that? Um, yeah, so um, great presentation, Francie. And how do you think the Great Depression affected her overall education and like her livelihood after college? I think it affected her, like it hit her really hard because during that time, the Great Depression wasn't anything like you couldn't pass over. It was like a big, big bump in the road through history. Okay, you told her great uh, presentation. I'm just curious, when you said great presentation, what's one specific thing that you thought made it good? Um, I like how she presented herself, um, which, because she's, she seems like very confident in what she was talking about. She knew her topic well. And I think the um, music was a nice touch and there was a lot of detail in her presentation. Okay. 
All right, that's excellent feedback. Let's give Francie a round of applause. Okay, and our next presenter should be about ready. Our next presenter, Nija. Zydasia, and then after her is Jacinia. Zydasia. I bet Zydasia has to go last a lot of times in these presentations <laughs> due to alphabetical order. It's nice I that do. she gets to go uh, earlier, isn't it? Yes. Okay, you're up. I'm trying to share my screen. It's not letting me share it. Is it? Almost. Almost. Give it a minute and then you might have to unshare and then reshare again. Can y'all see it? Hold on, it's slow. Almost. We can see it, it just took a minute. Okay, it's saying loading on mine. So just be prepared. When I see stuff like this happening and I'm presenting, then what I think I, I might be in a little bit of a fight with the uh, internet. So what you wanna make sure you do, it's gonna come up in a minute and you make sure if it slows down, be ready to, to kind of talk through some of the pauses that the computer might give you. Okay. If you want to start talking, let the presentation catch up with you. Okay, I'm Zero Rivers. I'm a fresh woman. I'm from Greensboro and I'm majoring in music. And I'm doing my presentation on um, Dr. Hattie Carwell. That's how you say it. It's not. Hold on. Close out some of your tabs. I think that's a good idea. Close out everything but that one tab you're using. I gotta, did it stop my screen share? It did, can you reset it? Yeah, let me do it. Is it um, sharing? It's coming. My laptop wants to move so slow. Okay, I'm doing my presentation on Dr. Hattie Carwell. She was born on July 17, 1948 in Brooklyn, New York, but she, was, she grew up and was raised in Ashland, Virginia. Her, this is her background from 1948 to 1971. Hattie grew up in a nurturing black community in Ashland, Virginia, where she found her interest in science. After graduating from high school in 1966, she enrolled at Bennett, where she earned her Bachelor of Science degree in chemistry in 1971. She then went to earn her Master of Science degree in health physics at Rutgers University in 1971. This is her career from 1980 to 2008. Throughout Hattie's career, hold on, let me move. Throughout Hattie's career, she worked nationally and internationally for the U.S. Department of Energy and the International Atomic Energy Agency as a health. 
as a health physicist and nuclear safeguards group leader. She moved to Vienna, Austria, where she served as a nuclear safeguards inspector and group leader at the International Atomic Energy Agency from 1980 to 1985. In 1990, she became a program manager for high energy and nuclear programs with the DOE San Francisco Operations Office. Soon after that, she then became a senior facility operations engineer at the Berkeley site office. Hattie was also a senior physical scientist before retiring in 2008. She also wrote um, numerous articles and she had two books. I only found one of her books and it was called Blacks in Science. I don't know how to pronounce that. I think Astrophysicist to Zoologist. Zoologist. Some of her achievements were she would is she is the recipient the recipient of numerous performance awards from the Department of Energy, and she is also recognized as a community leader. She is an alumna of Bennett College and included in the Black College Hall of Fame. These are some of her other jobs and careers. Dr. Carwell is a board member of the Northern California Council of Black Professional Engineers treasurer for the National Council of Black Engineers and Scientists, co-founder and chair of the Development Fund for Black Students in Science and Technology. And she is also director of the Museum of African American Technology Science Village. And these are my research sources, thehistorymakers.org and nsbp.org. Adesha, you want to talk just a little bit about why you chose her and what your favorite thing that you found out was? Nikaya so, was like, I did research. That. Oh, I did research on, um, like, most of the people on the list. And I just found, like, more information on her. And I thought it was just very interesting. Because, like, especially because she was, like, part of the Black community so much. And then I had got interested when I had found out she was in the Black, like, the, um, the Black College Hall of Fame, and I thought that was very interesting. And since she was a part of the Bennett Ford. Do you think young women, was science something that young women did a lot when she grew up, or was she sort of a, an exception? Can you say that again? Yeah, when she was coming up, do you think a lot of people her age were doing science and were science experts like she was, or do you think she was sort of out of the ordinary? I think she was out of the ordinary. What is it like for your, or were, were the young girls in your school interested in science a lot? Or was it more no, of a rare thing? It was like a rare thing. Cause I was like, I'm into science, but it's like hard. So it's kind of like a love hate thing. Cause like, I like it, but it's hard for me to understand. So, yeah. Okay. Did you get a chance to read any of her book? No, it's probably no. I I'll try to find like more of her books, but I only found that one, and um, I haven't read it. All right, let's give Zydesia a round of applause. Very good. Uh, okay, who is our next presenter, Nisha? Jacinia, and then Brienne. Oh, I can't. Jacinia, are you here? I'm here. I noticed you were you were gone yesterday. Is everything okay? Oh, I was there yesterday. Okay. I was, just sharing, I was just sharing screens with my cousin. Oh, you were with your cousin. I was with my cousin, who was on Zoom too, who's in the same class as me. That's right. That's who Dr. Trisdale was talking to you both. Okay. How do I share my screen? You go to the bottom and hit the green thing that says share screen. And I already then you did use that. Like the window that, you, that you're gonna use for your presentation. Okay. 
Okay. I got it. Okay, I'm going to give my Bennett introduction. My name is Jacinia. I'm an um, incoming freshwoman, and my major is undecided. My notable bell is Kendra Parks. And the reason why I chose her because I'm inspired by her because I want to be a future filmmaker. So Kendra Parks was a freshman at Bennett in 2000. And she was an undergraduate and her major was theater. At Bennett, um, during being a senior at Bennett, she read The Black Girl in Paris by Shea Youngblood. And Miss Parks, during, more, during her Morehouse homecoming game, during her senior year, wait, during her Morehouse homecoming game, during her senior year with friends. During, um, during the game, Mrs. Park met the amazing Spike Lee and had a conversation with Spike Lee. Because of the book that she read during her senior year, she decided that she was inspired by that book and she wanted to make a film out of it. Her life accomplishments of being a Belle, she graduated Bennett College in 2004 with a Bachelor of Arts in Theater. And then she furthered her education at the University of New York. And during um, furthering her education, she earned a bachelor's degree in film production. And during attending um, the University of New York, Spike Lee was her mentor in college. So the challenges that I think that she would have faced by being in the film industry is by being a black woman and telling black stories The notable, um, notable bell impact that she had years later after meeting Spike Lee in her senior year of college at Bennett and then furthering her education at the University of New York. Um, the book that she wanted to make into a film, The Black, Black Girl in Paris, was screened on HBO worldwide and she was nominated for awards. Thank you. And these are my um, cited ref um, resources. Sarah was wondering, is there a genre that you're interested in and does that overlap with some of the work she's done? Um, is there any, can you repeat that question? Sure. Um, what genre are you interested in doing? In other words, what type of movie would you like to make? Um, I would like to make drama. Um, I would like 
I would like to make um, novelas, what um, are Spanish um, soap operas. Um, I would also like to make horror films. Do you like her movies? Um, actually, I've never seen her movies. That's cool. You'll have something to do this weekend if you get bored. All right, let's give Justinia a round of applause. Okay, Nigia, who's up? Brianne and then Tamisha. Okay, Brianne, you're up. Justinia, you have to stop sh sharing your screen. Oh, thank you. Okay, is it sharing now? It is, it looks good. Yes. Okay, awesome. Okay, um, my name is Brian Barrett. Um, I am an up and coming, I'm unsure, cause I'm a readmit. Um, this is not my first year at Bennett. Um, and my, biz my major is business administration. So I decided to do my presentation on a notable bell on Dr. Sharon Height. Uh, I chose her because we're both uh, combat veterans um, and both served in the Army. Well, I'm still serving, but she got out. Um, and while I'm enlisted right now, I do want to go the officer route just like she did. So that's basically everything we have in common. Um, next, the making of a bell. So with Miss, with, with Dr. Height, excuse me, she graduated high school with a 1.9 GPA. She wasn't like, I wouldn't want to use the word slow, but our part of learning, she just didn't have that um, drive or anyone to push her because she didn't really see college as an option. Um, she had a son a year after graduating high school and what inspired her to go to Bennett was her sister. After her sister came back from spring break, she said her sister was a completely different person. She was poised, she was just, very ladylike and she was like, I wanna be exactly like that. So Bennett in the early 2000s, um, I need to add that she also was a political science major and she graduated in 2005. So back in the day, Bennett had almost every sport you could think of from basketball, swimming to soccer. Um, she said things that stuck out during that time was they had a lot of powerful speakers from Bill Cosby to uh, Oprah. Uh, so here's an example from a 2002 article from the Bennett Banner. It was a newspaper and they had their first Ebony So. Ebony So is homecoming for guys, you guys who don't know. So they had their first Miss Homecoming like Miss A&T and all that. So the challenge is, I'm pretty sure, being a single mother was a complete challenge. A young single mother in college was a complete challenge. And she was less fortunate and she didn't have a support group. Um, she also was from a very small town of Clinton, North Carolina. I've never heard of it. I'm not from North Carolina, so I don't know anything about it. Um, she said you, um, women didn't usually go to college, but kind of got married out of high school, just like any other small town. The lasting impact of Dr. Height. Um, in more than a few words, Dr. Height can be an inspiration to and this is a quote from her that uh, Dr. Cole, who was the president at the time, and then um, Honors College is named after Dr. Cole. Um, Never be afraid to reinvent yourself. She said whenever she got upset and something wasn't going her way, she reinvented, she reinvented herself. Um, one 
awesome thing about her was she was one of the few recipients of a Tillman scholarship to pursue a secondary education. It was amongst like 60 other people and it was like $1.7 million and that's that. Um, again, the connection that I had with her was, it's kind of frustrating having to come back to school after a deployment and then, you know, not in the same mindset. Um, so preserve no matter what obstacles you may face. Granted, I don't have a child, um, so I don't even, I can't relate with that. Um, in the making of who you are, remember what you are here for. Um, College can be a great experience for everyone. Just remember why you're actually here. Making friends, great, partying and socializing, awesome. But again, remember why you're here. And don't let anyone tell you, no, not right now, or try again later, which was another kind of quote from her because she was like, she was, again, she didn't have too much support. She did have the support of uh, a Miss Linda K. Torrance, um, a, a Bennett admin who let her in on a, uh, what is it called? Kind of like a probationary period where if she didn't make a 3.0 her first semester, then she couldn't come to Bennett. But she made a 3.5, so that was pretty cool. A major bounce back. Um, fun facts about Dr. Height. She is a member of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Um, she attended the Atlanta Women's Leadership Summit with Dr. Cole who was a president at the time. And her son actually decided to go to Morehouse College, which is our brother's school. So my work cited, I had a phone interview with her. Um, I kind of took up a lot of time because we like instantly clicked and we just talked about everything in the world. Another source I had was from the, I got like a sentence from the alumni um, page. And absolutely all I have. And if there's any questions, I'm very open to them. Brian, there have been a lot of questions about your service. Oh, oh my. So, so I think people are impressed about that. So maybe if you could just talk for a little bit about your experience and relate it as appropriate to your presentation. Um, my experience as in like being in the military. I think people are impressed that you're doing the military and and your desire to come back and apply that work ethic to college? Oh, um, it's kind of like, I don't know how to really explain it. It's the, it's, I guess since I'm just like, a, I'm lower enlisted, it's not fun having someone who literally you can do this same job as, or if not better, tell you what to do and then do the wrong thing. So it kind of inspired me like, I can do better. So let me do better and get on that train of getting my education. Let's say there was a world where everybody went and joined the military before coming to college. Mm. Would people be different as students and how would they be different? Um, well, I'm National Guard, so I joined, it, I joined when it was my senior year in high school. But I think it kind of, I think with the deployment, it gives you more of a serious mindset because it's like you, we're literally in a third world country. So you see people who do not have literally running water or anything. So it's like, uh, I, I can do better. It makes you want to do better. And I think with this semester coming in, I would definitely take my classes way more serious than I did beforehand because chow, it was a mess. <laughs> what did you have in common with her, Brienne? Um, so the things we had in common, um, she said she had no support. I mean, my mom is a college graduate, but my dad isn't. And after I told him I'm coming back to school, he kind of told me why, what's the use of doing that? So I don't really have support like everyone, a lot of other people do on every angle. I kind of just have like two or three people kind of cheering me on from the sidelines and a lot of people like, I don't see the use in doing that. So I kind of related to her in that aspect. Thank you. No problem. All right, thank you. You're off to a great restart. And let's let's switch over. Let's give her a round of applause and switch over to our next presenter. Tamisha and then Ayana. Dalton. Hello, everyone. I am getting my screen together. Okay. 
Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Tamisha Blunt. I am a fresh woman. Um, and I decided to do my notable bill presentation on Ms. Hideko Tamuro Snyder. Okay. And I just want, I put this little line here, a diamond formed through tragedy because her story is truly, it's interesting. Okay. Shout out to Bennett and all the Bennett bills. Today we will learn who is Hideko T. Snyder, why is she notable, where is she from, what is her contribution to the society we live in today, how did she decide to start the One Sunny Day initiative, when did she choose Bennett. So this is a photo of Ms. Hideko. And this is one of the lines from her book. Um, one sunny day, she said, 10 years old, she knew her childhood was over. And she said that because she was a survivor of Hiroshima. So she's from Hiroshima, Japan. And, you know, what's funny about this whole project is that I was already reading her book, right, before this project or this uh, assignment was assigned. So I was like, okay, this is not a coincidence. I just want to go ahead and complete this, you know, this um, presentation on her. But if if she wasn't on the list, I definitely would have chose Ms. Doan like everyone else <laughs> because Ms. Doan, I love Ms. Doan. But anywho, back to Ms. Hideko. Uh, she is a notable girl because she used her education to fight for peace in the midst of disaster. Um, after her experience within Hiroshima, she formed one Sunny Day Initiative. It's a peaceful education program that travels the world to inform people about, you know, the disaster of using atomic bombs and how you can affect multiple people, um, whether it's health, livelihood, and just family structure. So she attended Bennett in the year of 52. Um, as I'm reading her book, I haven't completed reading the book yet. So I, I was able to like, you know, skim through. I, I didn't want to do it like that, but I was able to skim through and catch a, a, a couple glimpses of, you know, her experience at Bennett. But um, I think a good fact to know is that the 75th anniversary of Hiroshima was actually August 6th. And she was on a, a couple news channels just discussing her experience and just sharing with the world, you know, what took place that day because she'll never forget. So this is just a couple of photos of her. This is her book to the right. Um, up top to the left, we see her, you know, spreading the word. And she's a very peaceful individual. I noticed as I watched a lot of her videos and, you know, her presentations, though she went through a tragic, you know, occurrence, you know, she, She's very peaceful. She's very soft spoken. And, you know, she really loves Bennett when it comes to that aspect, because with her transitioning from a whole nother culture, she was able to, you know, make a make a smooth, you know, transition with the support of her Bennett, Bennett sisters. And at that time, when she was when she attended Bennett, um, Dr. Willoughby Player was the dean. So she, she leaned on her for a lot of support. And this is one of the quotes from her book. She said, for all that teaches us to be truly human. And, you know, I think I, I chose this one of these quotes because I felt that we go through a lot as people, like forget race, forget gender, you know, forget all of that. As human, we go through a lot. And it teaches us to care for each other. It teaches us to connect with one another. And I just thought that was a very subtle, subtle quote, but loaded at the same time. And these photos are from the summer of 1954. In the middle, this is a picture of her on Bennett campus, actually. She's very beautiful. Um, and then to the left, we see her revisiting the site 
of Hiroshima, you know, where, where she lived, but it was once her home. So we can see on both sides, on the left and the right, you know, her just reflecting on what once was. I actually, before I get to the questions, I actually, this is her book right here. Um, I highlighted one thing that she did say about Bennett. She, she loves Bennett. Now, she talks about how when she first arrived, she found a few people that were within her culture. So, you know, she connected to them because they reminded her of home, right? But as she began to let down her guard and, you know, learn different things, and seeing the segregation, she, she witnessed segregation in Greensboro. She's just like, you know, she didn't understand the concept of black and white or colored and white. Um, and she just didn't understand how people could be so divisive. But she loves Dr. Wilma B. Player, and she says this here. She says, the person who symbolized the elegance of Bennett Institution most was its dean, Dr. Wilma B. Player, a young Oh, excuse me, a young woman of, of superior intellect and grace. And I just thought that was really sweet for her to say that, because um, I too have watched a few um, pictures and, you know, read a few books about um, Dr. Wilma B. Player, and she's very beautiful and she seems very graceful. So, in conclusion, I just have a couple Did questions for you all. Oh, uh, to I'm be sorry. I'm sorry, we froze for yes. a second. Hey, uh, listen, oh. I, hate, I hate to do this, but can you just give a couple of closing thoughts? Because we need to get on to the next presentation so we don't run out of time. Okay. Um, yeah. well, I'm sorry I just, to cut you short. For closing, okay. I just, for my closing, I just had a couple questions. But to sum it all up, she's a notable Bennett Bell because she's gone through a lot. And she was able to come out on the other side of it. She wrote a book, she started an initiative, and she's produced great change to the world that we live in today. So thank you for your time, everyone. Yes, yeah. round of applause. And um, I'm so glad you you uh, were reading that book when this project was assigned. And uh, y'all can yeah, answer. Yeah, it's very helpful. Y'all can answer some of these questions in the chat. Okay, yeah. let's get our next presenter up. After Ayana is Samaya Green. Okay, Ms. Dalton. Hi. I'm trying to get this to stop sharing, guys. One second. Hit the little red thing at the top. Okay, got it. Can everyone see it? Is it working? Is it working? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Ayana. I'm a freshman, and I'm majoring in biology on a pre dentistry track. And the notable bill that I chose was Miss Sharon Fryer Hyde. Um, this is just my, ta my table of contents. Um, I chose Ms. Hyde because of her military experience. Um, I didn't see many other like ladies on the list that had something completely different with them when it came to like serving and doing things that people always assume men would do. So I thought that would be something great to talk about. Um, she's still continuing to aim for hire, which I'll touch on as we get through the slides. And it's just black excellence altogether from every lady that was on the list. Um, before I start a disclaimer for her time served, I know for a fact she did get to private first class. I'm not sure if she went any higher or not, but this is like, from what I saw, like the second level, I'm not really sure, but I'm pretty sure that's like how it goes. Um, when she first served, well, when she was like in training and everything, there were 6,500 other women that were serving as well. And all while doing this, she was still getting her college degree. Um, I compared our work ethic because 
going through everything, she stayed focused throughout school, and then she went and served. And that, to me, is just a lot to go, a lot to do. It shows how much she was really dedicated. Because personally, just working and being in school is a lot. So I know that finishing that and then going to serve was a lot more. Um, she set a lot of big goals for herself. She plans to teach. Well, she was teaching. Well, she taught. Okay, so sorry. She taught and she continues to help other people that are trying to be just like her. And she's striving for greatness. Everything she did was just wonderful. Um, her impact now is she, well, I wouldn't say now, but at the time, she was teaching and helping junior officers and non-commissioned officers. I'm assuming that she was just helping them get to where she was and give them like information or assistance as to what path to take them in. She did serve as an academic mentor. Teaching was another part of the many things that she did. And a part of the 60 men and women that make up the 2015, oh, not a part. She was a part of the 60 men and women that make up the 2015 class of Tillman Scholars. She will receive 1.7 million in scholars or about that much, depending on, you know, things change. And she's a she's big on global change, very big. And this is my citation. Tamaya, could, could you jump off? Tamia, could you jump off and ask your question real quick? Tamia wanted to know after reading the, oh, that was that for the last presenter, Tamia? Yeah, that was for the last presenter. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. Wait, who's our other person that had Miss Height? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause. Are you talking about Miss Carwell? No, no, Height. It was Brian. Brianne, do you do you have any questions? Did you have um how did you get your information on her? Um I took the facts that were on the profiles and then I just Googled like the notable things and then her time served and I Googled it and made sure that my facts lined up with uh, with what little we were given because there wasn't much for us to work with that I had to Oh Dang, that sounds so much easier. I literally stopped on Facebook. So, and if okay, y'all do, you. if y'all do further research on that, there's a couple of places I think where we can find interviews with her. So let's get our next presenter up. Who's our next presenter? Samaya Green, and then after that, it's Laisha James. Hi guys. Hello. You know that's when you okay. Um, so before I uh, start my presentation, I do want to ask, how's everybody's day going today? So far, so good. How are you? I'm good. great. I'm just asking due to the fact I just want to know how my audience is right now. So that's good. You guys are good. That is great. Just give me one moment. Samaya, are you talking now? Can you guys still see me? We can see you. You just cut out for a second. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry for that. I didn't know. Can everybody 
guys see my screen? Hey, hey Samaya. My internet. I think, yeah, we're, that's okay. It's not, it's not your fault. Um, and the presentation looks. Okay, so Samaya, we're going to have to come back to you. It looks like the presentation's cutting out. Can you unshare your screen and then we'll double back? Okay. Um, right, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you're fine. I do not know how to unshare. Can you walk me through it? Yeah, hit, hit the, uh, go up to the top and hit the Just red button share. where it says stop share. Oh, duh. Okay. Stop share. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll come back in a, in a few minutes, a little bit later. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. Okay. okay. Okay, who's up next? Laisha and then Asia Jones. Lachey, you ready? I'm trying to share my screen. Okay. You remember how to? Yes. Can everybody see it? Yeah, I can see it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I can see it. Okay, great. I did Dr. Yardley Nelson Hunter. Um, I'm Lachey James. I'm a fresh woman majoring in journalism and media studies. And I chose Dr. Yardley Nelson Hunter because she's a veteran and she was featured in um, veterans in blue and I watched the video and it was really intriguing because I have veterans in my family and I've heard their stories and I just I love hearing those stories. This is a photo um, back in 2016. I, I think it's the most current picture that I found of her. Uh, she, she was at Bennett um, in 1971 to 1975. She joined the U.S. Air Force after graduation, and she was second lieutenant by August 1975. This is from the yearbook. I found the yearbook on um, line, and I looked through it, and it was so interesting. Like they, it was just so cool to see back then. She was from Buffalo, New York. She had two children and she married a fellow Lieutenant, but they later divorced. Her major was interdisciplinary studies with a concentration in English studies. And she went to school with two scholarships, one of them being a humanitarian scholarship. Uh, she was the first female to be se selected as a air training, Air Force training officer. She served for 11 years. She traveled a lot. She was in Alabama. She went to Europe um, and she went to some other states. She did 10 years of National Guard, and out of three women, she was one to graduate Bennett with an Air Force commission. Um, she loved to be a role model, so she taught the first class of women Air Force officers. Um, like I just said, she loved to be a role model, so her quote is, she did so I can, and that's what she wanted younger students to say about her.
this is a video. I didn't know if we would have time, but this is from Veterans in Blue. And then I also have a link to the yearbook. Um, Professor Lipscomb, do we have time to look at a few uh, seconds of the documentary? Yeah, uh, play just a few seconds of it and then we'll share the link in the ch and then share the link in the chat so people can look at it at their leisure. Okay. And give us a summary of what this is. This is, she talked about her uh, time in service. She talked about, in this clip that I'm gonna show you, she talks about the man and the female part of, she said it was very lonely and I'll let you listen to it, watch it. Unlike the other military academies, the Air Force tried to learn. I think that's a representation of where men were then. And you can't fault them for what they don't know and how limited they were. But the Air Force as a whole was much more progressive than man. They went through the process of saying, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen right. When the class of 1980 called us back and said, we remember you. We remember when you were there and we were just freshmen. Very good. Let's pause there. And let's uh, put that link up. Um, I, I wonder if you could answer in the chat. Some people were asking about what's your favorite thing about the yearbook. So if you could answer that in the chat, you know, when we get switched over to the next, while we're switching over to the next presenter. Okay. Everybody, can we give a round of applause? Excellent, very cool movie. Yes, it was very interesting. I watched it a couple times and took some notes. Who was up next? Um, Deasia Jones and then Angela Nettles. Okay. And Angela, I'm, you're, you're going to be okay on your four o'clock deadline. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Deasia, are you here? Is Deasia not here? You're not here. Okay. Angela, you're up. And I apologize. There's going to be times I'm having to cut things a little shorter than I'd like to, but we have a little bit of a time limitation. But I want you to know that if, if there's something we miss, like I'd be, I really would like to work with you one-on-one -on -one at some point, like after class or before class, to where I can see these projects in a little bit more depth and detail. Okay, um, just a heads up, Tio is next. Okay, so can y'all see my screen? We can see it. Okay. Okay, so um, good afternoon. My name is Angela Nettles, and I have the distinct pleasure to introduce my noble bell, Star Allen Petway. Star Allen Petway was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. After graduation, she continued her education at Bennett College. Um, during the time she, she was at Bennett College, um, the president was Gloria, Gloria Randall Scott, who we know from the Bennett history. And um, as Star Allen Petway was in Bennett College, she earned her degree in psychology. After leaving Bennett, she went to Howard University, where she received her master's degree in social work in 2001. Um, during her academic career, she also um, became a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, which is also the same sorority that uh, former President Gloria Scott was in. In her personal life, uh, she is married with five children. She has all boys and yeah. So I have a quick interactive quiz. Um, I'm not, I didn't quite think about how I was gonna, this was gonna work, 
because I can't see the chat and everything like that. But if anybody wants to come off mute and answer the quiz questions, that'd be great. Okay, give it a go. All right, so just remember, this is a quiz on trying to guess what her career is, why she was a notable belle. And remember that her degrees are in psychology and social work. The first question is, where does she, where is she working from? Anybody want to take a gander? Can you repeat the question? Um, where does Miss Allen Petway work from? He works from home. <laughs> uh, yes, now in COVID-19, I assume so, but like, um, as in the Greensboro, the ants, can y'all see the quiz? No. Oh, no. okay, that, that explains a lot. <laughs> um, I don't know how to... How about now? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so you <laughs> see Detroit, Michigan. All right. So I heard Washington D.C. first. The correct answer is Detroit, Michigan. After her graduation, she returned to her hometown to spread her knowledge and all that good stuff. She's a member of many organizations, but only one organization she founded. Central Detroit Christian. The last one, Central Detroit Christian Community the Development. Last one. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that's not correct. It might be the sisters. The sisters. I was thinking that. Founded the sisters standing strong together in January of 2014. And it's a faith-based movement that was guided by um, spiritual reality-based teachings, and they help women, other young women in the community to become successful, and it's kind of like a mentorship. But she's a part of all the organizations that were listed. Move through kind of quick, and then we'll, we'll shoot our answers into the chat. Okay, so Miss um, Petway, she works with children of all ages and also adults. She deals with adults as well. Um, in her line of work, communication skills are essential because in order to do her job effectively and her current career title. You can give us pause for one minute for us to answer. So go through it fast. Go quick. <laughs> I yeah. Split the difference. All right, well, there's not too many questions left, so uh, her current career title is a branch director at Bethany Christian Services, but this is not the only leadership um, role she has occupied. She's also been a chief um, director at a local hospital in Detroit, Michigan. Um, which of these careers are most related to her line of work? It's all of them. She does all of these. She has done all of these at one point of time in um, her career. Sugar. And how long has she been in her career field? Twenty-two years. She has been in her career field for fifteen years. On consistently helping her community in Detroit, Michigan. So yeah, that is the quiz. So that was a really effective way to present information with that quiz. I'm sorry I, I messed up your rhythm, but uh, that, I would definitely give that a try for future presentations. So this is just re reiterating some of the information that was in the quiz. 
Um, these are some of her accomplishments. She is a she was founder of Sisters Stand and Strong Together. That's a picture of that at the bottom. She's working at Bethany Christian Christian Center, which deals with foster care and youth, um, and um, immig helping immigrants and things of that nature. Um, I found these are some of the publications I found of her working in her community. Um, these are from local news service outlets and radio stations. She's done interviews there too. These are some of her words. And um, this is why I chose Star Allen Pet Um When I went to the, when I finished my four year degree at Bennett College, um, I'm majoring in women's Africana women's studies because I want to be able to be an advocate for women, also specifically African American women and the struggles that we're facing in our communities and making sure that we have our voices heard in all um, versions of, in all political and economic settings. And like Star Allen Petway, who has used her voice and her talent in her community and touched countless lives, and I hope to do the same in my community. These are the works cited, and thank you all for listening. You all can clap too. All right, thank you, Angela. Thank Who's you. up next? Tio Luwani Onadeji. Yeah. Tio, you're up. And then Charnia. Oh. There's a problem. I can't share my screen. Say that again. Um, the tent is not sharing. Uh, okay, so you're on a computer? On my phone. Does anybody have a quick piece of advice on sharing from the phone? It should be the same way as an um, iPad. You have an iPhone? Oh, no, Android. Oh. Uh, and she just read them, huh? She's got it. Okay. Is it showing? Because I can't I can see it. It works. OK. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeliwani Onodeji, but you could call me Tio. I'm from Nigeria, but I live in North Carolina. My major is biology. I'm on a fresh woman. My notable bell is Dr. Linda Brown. Her full name is Linda Beatrice Brown. She was born in Akron, Ohio, and she is the niece of Willoughby Player. Now, who is Willoughby Player? She was the first female and the first African American president of Bennett, and also the first African American woman to become the president of a four year college in the United States. Dr. Brown, education. She, was, she graduated from Bennett College in 1961. She majored in French and English. She graduated as a valedictorian. She got a PhD from Union institutes and university. Then she focused her studies on African American literature and creative writing. Her career. She is a distinguished writer and a professor. She's a poet and was a great and was a guest lecturer at many schools. She taught at Kent State University, UNCG, Guilford College and Bennett College. She's also a civil rights activist. Now she's a retired professor, but she continues to create books and poems. Some challenges she faced was racism, segregation, and protesting. And what I mean by protesting, she had the urge to protest, she wants to protest, but from one of the interviews, one of our bells did with her, she was scared at the point because she knew her life was at risk. She knew what she was risking. She had a book in front of her, but because of that fear, she was shaking. So she knew what she was going after. Now, campus life back then was more of protesting because that was when the sitting movement started. And girls, they leave, once they're done with their classes, they go to join in the sitting movement, then other come back to class and it was vice versa. Now the city movement. Dr. Brown wrote a book called Bells of Liberty. 
Now, this book tells us the story of bells who were very much involved in the city movement, but not only our bells, but others too. This book was published because people only knew, were only taught, or gave credit to our four men from North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, that's ANT. No credit was given to our bells. It also talked about how the city movement was made. Some of our achievements were one of our books were, was a prize winning book. She was awarded a headline Ed Lancetta for the Arts Residency by North Carolina Arts Council in 1996. She was honored as a living legend HBCU graduate last year by the NC, Le NC Living Legend Organization. And she was also honored at the annual seat banquet. Apart from the Bells of Liberty, there are some other books she wrote like A Love Song to Black Men, Rainbow, Crossing Over Jordan, and The Long Walk. She also, she also wrote some articles and some poems. A laughing impact is that she was able to give us a backstory of a historic event. She's given us the opportunity to appreciate our bells and to be blessed as a bell. I chose her because I admire our goal, which is to create social justice, with our teaching and writing. Even though Dr. Brown and I have different fields, we both want to use our passion to make a difference in the society. And these are some of the pictures. The first picture shows a signing book in 2009. The second picture shows those who participated in the city movement. And this picture was taken in 2013. And the last picture, picture shows the city movement. And that's all. And lastly, if anyone wants to be a writer, I have a link I could share in the chat for you so that you can have a contact and you can be able to talk to her and she can give you some tips on how to create better books. Thank you. Yeah, Tia, you're getting some compliments on your accent in the uh, chat. So some of us are gonna have to maybe, you're gonna have to train some of us to uh, do your accent while presenting presentations. Do you think you can do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, real quick, um, you've got some good questions in the chat. Would you have done the same thing as her if you went to Bennett College at that time? I think so, yes, I would. But I would still be scared as I, as I because I knew that my life was going to go or I was going to die soon. So it's going to take a while, but I think I'll do it. OK, nice work. Let's get our next presenter ready. Thank you, Tio. After Charnia, it's Kyra Owens. Okay, Charnia, you're up. I don't see her in here. Okay, then that's Owens. Owens up. After her, it's Key Asia Pemberton. Okay. Okay. And how do I share my screen? I don't see it down at the bottom. Are you on a computer, Kyra? Yes, I'm on my MacBook. Okay, go to the green that says screen share on the bottom. You might have to hold your, your cursor kind of over it. Okay. It's a, it's a green button on the very, it's next to chat. What's next to chat? I see more next to chat. I don't see. So try more and see if. Something says screen sharing. Mm. Okay. No, I don't see. Mm. Let me see. So this is what it looks like on the bottom of mine. See, when you go put yeah. below, does yours look like that at the bottom? 
No, it just says participants, chat, and more. That's all I see. Hmm. That's strange. Do you, do you want to try to wait and come back on? Yeah, I can wait and just come back. Why don't you send, why don't you send me um, that, or send, why don't you send actually one of your friends by email? Send them the, who's, okay. who's got their email near? Can you send it to nyjah.ridley at bennett.edu? She can run your- Yes, okay. Okay. All right, thanks. And then we'll jump on to the next presenter, who is- Kiesha. Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. Can y'all see, oh, no, see my screen? Can y'all see my screen? We can. Okay. Can I make it big or no? Okay, one thing I want to say, Kiesha, before you get started, you're, that when you, now that you got to somebody who is, feel free if you get to some things that have already been covered, you can just say something like, okay, you know, I is our last- already. What's that? My did his name already? Yeah. Okay. Like All just right. now, just, that was the last one. So when you get to information that's a duplicate, you can say, okay, is Tio, is Tio talked about? And you can just go over it a little quicker and then pause okay. and do a little, a little longer on the new parts. Okay. Um, my person is Dr. Linda Brown. My name is Kesha Pimpleton. I am from Troy, North Carolina, and my major is social work, and I'm a sophomore. Okay, a few facts. She's from, I, I can't say that word, Akron, Ohio. She attended Bennett College, and she majored in English and French. Um, Brown has been an educator at schools and universities, including Kent State University, University of North Carolina, Greensboro, and Goodford College. Currently, she is a Willoughby player, the English professor of the Humanities at Bennett College for Women. She teaches African American literature there. Okay. She won several awards, writing for both fiction and nonfiction, second place in creative writing contest at her college, first place in fiction writer from the North Carolina Coalition of Arts and Residency at the Headland Center. Okay, she has a few books. Actually, we have read Bills of Liberty and um, Orientation B in school before we had came home for the coronavirus. That's why I put that one first. But she had Black Angels, Crossing Over Jordan, and The Long Walk, and many of her books are based on the civil rights movement and the struggles of slavery. She has a few articles called Beloved, A Book Review, Treasure, A Short Story, and O. Henry, o. Henry Festival Stories, and Poetry and Word and Witness. She has some drama plays, Congo's River Story, Dangerous Pretty, some more interesting facts. Um, Dr. Brown usually writes about the African-American experience, specifically the black woman. She has a poetry in anthologies and magazines. At 14, she began writing and published first in Beyond the Blues, a poetry anthology when she was only 19. Dr. Brown continues to be an inspiration to her colleagues and family. She has been a guest literature at many schools and colleges. Linda has led several classes and workshops, which have been focused on the divine as mother and the mystery as mother. Those are my science. That's all. Kiesha, could you talk for a minute about what it was like to see her in person last year? If you were at that event? I remember that. When we, talking, we had the seminar? Yeah. We came to the school. Yeah, so what was I'm she not, like? I'm not going, I'm not have been, been there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tia, Tia, you studied Dr. Brown. Would you give a quick question for Kiesia before we switch over to the next oh, presenter? Oh, dear. Oh, quick question from Tia. Where's she at? Oh. Tia, are you there? Yes, sir. Give a quick question for Key Asia since y'all studied the same person. Um, let me see. And then our our next presenter can get ready. I don't know Audrey Rose. No. Can I put it in the chat when I figure out the question? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Naja, you got that queued up? Um, no, not yet. I think she's still trying to figure it out. But the next person is Audrey Rhodes. Okay. Audrey, you're up. All right. Um. Let's give a, a round of applause for Kiesia, too. Can you guys see it? 
Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, my notable bell was Ch Chandra Luckett. Um, I chose her because she's a philanthropist. She's always giving back to her community and I just find that inspiring because I want to be able to do the same thing. Um, I couldn't find a lot about her background information, but I did find out that she was from Gulfport, Mississippi. And she was senior class president in 2006 at Bennett. She majored in journalism and media studies and she joined Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. And she hoped to land a job in television and broadcasting. Uh, well, now she's chief marketing officer at Chris 180, which is um, it's a nonprofit that works to improve community, uh, the community by providing behavioral health services to children, adults, and families. And Chris stands for creativity, honesty, respect, inter integrity, and safety. And she's a three-time Southeast Emmy nominee, and she won Associated Press Award for South Carolina's Best, best new Newscast at Fox Carolina. And this is just a quote I found. I not only owe it to myself to succeed, I owe it to Bennett because it has given me so much. Graduation is not the final chapter, it's the beginning to the rest of my life. And I didn't really know um, the challenges she had, so I just kind of guessed because in that field, she probably faced a lot of discrimination and certain things like that. Um, her lasting impact was um, she provides access to health centers and I, I would say it like put a shift in society like people are more willing to receive help and the it's there so they can go get help if they need it. Um, she connects to Bennett College's um, per personal mission because she's very proactive in her community and I said she's the definition of it of civic engagement because she's working to make a difference in the civic life in one's community by volunteering at um, Chris the nonprofit. And that's it. Hey, can, can we ask a question to you? Yeah. Okay, Lachey had a good question. Like, what, when you get done with college, if somebody was doing a presentation about you, what would you want them to say about you? Would it be similar to this? Oh, I hope so, because she was really successful. She worked at three different news stations, and she was promoted a lot, and she was just really successful. And that's something about her that you would like to follow? Yes, like she really gave back to her community and she even donated to Bennett in 2018 or 2017. Um, it's just like, I wish I could do that. That sounds like a good ambition and let's give you a round of applause, Audrey. Thank you. And um, Najah, who's up next? Kennedy Allen. Hey guys. I'm about to start sharing. Okay, so first, I'm Kennedy Allen. I'm majoring in biology, and I'm a fresh woman, and I'm from Winston-Salem. Okay. Can y'all see it? We can. Okay, so this is my Notable Bell presentation. I chose Ms. Brianna Barner. She's from the South Side of Chicago. And if I'm not mistaken, she graduated, wait, what happened? Oh, she graduated in 2008. Okay. 
Okay. How did Bennett impact her life? Bennett had a huge impact on her life. She met her best friends who ended up being her bridesmaids and kids godmoms. She also had amazing professors. Miss Jeffries, the yoga teacher, actually came to her wedding and is also teaching a virtual yoga class for her 30th birthday, which is next week. What did Miss Barner accomplish after graduating from Bennett? She got married in 2013. She now has two kids, Harlem, who is six, and Sage, who is six months. She got her master's from UT Austin. She's almost finished with her PhD cohort. As a PhD student, she is still able to get research funding from them years later. Some most memorable moments from Ms. Barner. Her most memorable moments were hanging out with her friends, exploring Greensboro, and then hanging at each other's apartments once they moved off campus. Being downtown Greensboro, being in JMS, working on Bell Magazine, and her then boyfriend proposing to her right when she walked off the stage. Here's a statement that Ms. Barner made. She said, wait, hold on, sorry. Okay, she said, there is nothing like attending HBCU and specifically a woman's college. Okay, did you just come come up? What, what's the question that we have for you, Kennedy? Does anybody have a question for Kennedy real quick? I think her, went, her internet went out. Okay, yeah, because it cut off kind of quick. She said her computer died. Okay, gotcha. Nigel, you want to pull up the next one and then... Um, um, the next person when is... When Kennedy a, pops back in, we'll just, email, we'll just uh, put questions in the chat. The next person is Amina Simpson. You hear Amina? No, she's not. She's absent. Okay, well, the next person is Sydney Snow. Okay. And then you could plug Kyra back in. I still haven't gotten an email from her yet. I can share my screen now. I got the email. Yes. Um. Okay, so I did my presentation on my mom. My mom is my notable Bell. My name is Sydney Snow. I'm from Waldorf, Maryland, and I'm majoring in social work, and I'm a fresh woman. I have my mom here with me. Um, so some background information about my mom is that she attended Eastern High School. And while she was there, she was in the world-renowned Eastern High School Choir under the direction of a Bennett alum, Joyce Garrett. And while she was there, they did different performances. They traveled to Paris. Paris and she um, got to perform in the 2008. Bill Clinton's inauguration. So while my mom was at Bennett, um, she was a first generation college student and she attended in 1994. She went to Bennett with only a book scholarship of $250. She majored in mass communications and she stayed in Barge Hall as a fresh woman and co hall the rest of her tenure. At Bennett, she started off rough because she had never been away from home and she had like a little financial trouble. She was never really familiar with the financial aid system. So she always, you know, took frequent trips to the financial aid office to make sure that she had everything in check. Um, while she was at Bennett, she began to develop a friendship with a lot of her sisters from all over, just like us. I mean, we're, a lot of us are from like different places. In her freshman year, she went to Atlanta for Morehouse's homecoming, and she said that when they went, they always traveled in groups, and that whenever they were there, they always knew that they were Bennettville. 
So like I uh, previously stated, some challenges she faced was struggling with the financial aid because she was a first generation college student. So not many people in my family knew about the financial aid process. Also, she um, just normal stress about schools. So while my mom was at Bennett, here's a picture. Um, she had a lot of involvement. One of she was one of the hosts of our campus of the campus video shows, Ebony Vibe. She was a part of Network 2000, which was a mass communication organization. She became Miss Network 2000 in '98 for the coronation, and she helped put together Bennett's first big fashion show during the 1998 Dell Fest, and she graduated in 19. So. This right here is a picture of my mom. She was a 2012 honoree for the DC Metro chapter's White Breakfast for her service to the to women in the community. Um, I don't, has anybody here ever been to a white breakfast? I can't see the chat, so I'll see. No. Nobody's ever been? No, okay. I wish. <laughs> okay. No. So this next picture is really embarrassing, so. <laughs> Anyways, this was me at my first white breakfast. I'm not keeping this picture up here long, but this is me at my first white breakfast. <laughs> um, so after um getting it bitten, my mom of course had you know like little jobs, but one of the major things that she had was that she started her own nonprofit organization called Diva Movement in 2011. And some background on. Diva Movement is that it focuses its mission on empowering women through health and wellness, both mentally and physically. Um, Diva Movement started with the weight loss journey, but also it started a lot with her involvement with Bennett and sisterhood, because she's really heavy on that. Um, as she lost the weight, she shared her progress on social media and she began to grow a long list of followers, like a long. So as she began to grow her list, that led her to becoming the cover, the cover of 2016 and the 2019 um, cover of Southern, Mer Southern Merlin Women Magazine. And she made history as the first woman to make the cover twice. I did put the links in the end as two of my sources. So that'll be available to um, look through. I'll put it in the chat as well. So it's a really long list, but these are a couple of accomplishments the Diva Movement has made from 2014 to 2019. I'll just name the first, I'll just name a couple. So over a thousand children have received toys from a toyathon that we do every year. Um, over 500 children receive brand new coats from their coat drive that we used to do in the winter time every Wednesday at Jasper. And over 50 young ladies received assistance for their proms via their prom queen makeover initiatives that we do every year. And this year, even though due to COVID, I wasn't able to have a prom, I was um, the dear woman's prom queen. And on my birthday, they crowned me the um, queen. And here are my sources. This is the two links for both of the um, magazine covers. And I also did a personal interview with my mom as her again. And my feet. All right, round of applause for Sydney. Sydney, do you think your mom would be willing to pop into class one day, either right after class or during class, if we have a break in the action? Yeah, she should. You, yeah, she's here. So I mean, she could do it. I mean, if you want to talk to her now, you can. Working in the next room, so <laughs> Thank you for coming. So I see a question in the hey. chat that says, will I take on the Diva movement if my mom ever decides to hand it to someone? Yes, if she was to hand it to anyone, I would hope she would hand it to me. <laughs> so, if I, I was... Was... Okay, Jessica. Wait, let, that... me answer, let me finish answering this one first. Yes, if she All was right. to hand Diva movement over to me, yes, I would take it. But you're going to judge it. Well, I was going to say, question. is that movement still going on? Yes, to this day. Um, we also do have a, um, a Young Divas, which I do participate in heavily. We've done things like sleepovers from the age 7 to 17. And we do a lot of things like we do a lot of talks and 
we've done like these things called chat and packs where we pack um, bag lunches and we do just like talk a lot about like things that's happening in our community, heavy topics. And mm-hmm. after we're finished, we go and we pass out the lunches to the um, homeless. Oh, that's so, nice. There's a lot that we do in the um, Young Beavers program, but I'm getting older now, so I'll be, I'll still be helping, but I'll be more involved in the community. <laughs> Nigel, who's up next? Let's say everybody give Sydney a round of applause and thanks to her mom also. Um, it's Kyra Owens and Monteria is going to be um, doing the clicking through of the slides. Okay, go ahead and pull that up, Monteria. Sydney, I'm interested in hearing from your mom more about Ebony Vibes too. Okay, with, uh, she just left off the room, but I'll tell her to come back at the end of class. Okay, great. Thank you for helping, Monteria. You're welcome. Okay, so my name is Kyra Owens. I am from Jetersville, Virginia, and I am majoring in chemistry at Bennett. And this is my Notable Bell project. You can go to the next slide, Monteria. It's loading, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're good. Thank you. Okay, so I chose Miss Jennifer Ferris, and the reason why I chose her is because of her, accomplish- her accomplishments. They just stood out to me, and overall, she just worked very hard to get where she is today. She has been a film and television location professional for 19 years, and basically what she does is take photos, arrange visits to certain locations, and just talk to the location owners so, so they can work out costs so they can pay for those locations and stuff. And sometimes she would act as a location scout during pre-production or hold a locations management position on set during production. And basically a location scout, they just find the environment that best suits that particular scene. So you can go to the next one. Uh, More about her. She was born in 1972 in Atlanta, Georgia. And she graduated from Bennett in 1996, where she studied mass communications. Um, you can, in the chat, I want to know if you major in mass communications, because I think that would be very cool to know. Her accomplishments. She received recognition as one of the top 25 most influential women in Atlanta, by, ro- by Rolling Out Urban Weekly. And Rolling Out Urban Weekly is just a marketing and advertising company. She has done voiceovers on popular commercial radio stations. She's completed radio promotions for record labels. She's managed performance rights for songwriters. She created public relations campaigns and press tours. And a member of the Location Managers Guild International. And basically what that is is a professional organiza- organization for, uh, for location managers, assistant location managers, location scouts, just basically what she does. And that was just really big for her. You can go to the next slide. What was Bennett like during her time? So Ms. Gloria Reynolds Scott was her was Ms. Ferris's president during her time at Bennett. And something interesting that I found was that the faculty and Bennett in 1992 and 93 was very diverse with people from Chile, Ghana, India, Jamaica, Nigeria, Palestine, Persia, Sierra Leone, and South America. Challenges. She didn't really face many challenges. However, there there were moments where she felt frustrated, and I think that can relate to a lot of us where we feel frustrated at times. And she was a very faith-filled woman and believed moving past her struggles. She never let her struggles get the best of her. Next slide. Impact. Ms. Ferris is a talented professional in the mass communications industry that helped produce well-known TV shows and films that we know today. And she's recognized as an influential woman of Atlanta. How does she connect with the personal mission of the college? Ooh, I don't know why I did that. But the Bennett mission statement explains that the college prepares women of color to lead with purpose, honesty, and a powerful sense of self-respect. 
and she connects perfectly with this because her character, her hard work, and faith just matches with all three of those ideals, ideals, and that Bennett implies to help get you to be successful. And these are a couple of films and a few TV shows that she's been a location scout for. Um, I know a, some of us might have seen Just Mercy. I haven't seen it, but I, I want to watch it when I get the chance. Um, Let This Church Say Amen. It came out in 2013. Um, NBC's Constantine, I've never seen that before, but I know it was very major. Um, BET's Being Mary Jane, that came out in 2015. I used to watch Mary, Being Mary Jane all the time. So I incorporated that. And then the Bobby Brown story, I don't know if any of you have seen that, but I love that story. So next slide, you can go to the next slide. And then this is just my work cited page. Any questions? That's all I have. All right, round of applause for Kyra. If anybody wants to throw a question or two into the chat, go ahead. Seems like a very, very cool career to do. The next person is Tamaya Clay. Okay, Tamaya. Can y'all see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, well, how y'all doing today? I'm gonna ask you guys that. Um, my name is Samari Clay. I'm from Rockville, North Carolina. I'm an income and fresh woman, and I am majoring in biology. And I chose to pick Miss Linda Brown because she's a civil rights activist, and she likes to. When you think about a civil activist, what do you think about? You think about somebody who fights for other people's rights and theirs, you know. So I like a person that that fights for what they believe in because I'm also that type of person. Okay, so Ms. Linda College Days. Hold on, wait. I don't even think I have it in the presentation. Okay, so her college days. My computer is so slow. And Tamaya, like I was telling them before, if you run into things that we've already gone over in other presentations, you can go over those more quickly. Okay. So, well, college days, basically she graduated from Bennett in 1961. She majored in French and English in college, but she graduated as a valedictorian. But she also received her PhD from Union Institute and University, and after that she focused on her writing. Background information about Dr. Brown. She was born in Akron, Ohio. She's now 81 years old and she is still alive today. Her first book came out and when her first novel came out, known as Black Angel, she was picked for the 2009 Conference of South Carolina Independent Booksellers. Dr. Brown is an author, educator, and a civil rights activist. She taught at many universities as well as the ones of the examples you guys see in there. And her Amer African American studies was also our favorite topic too. And this is a, a quote in one of her books where she says, place where the girls were taught the finer things of life and the social grace. And these are her books in play. So I do advise you guys to go check them out because she is very talented and you know, she gives good word to those of like who've been down her road pretty much, or she gives good opinions to those who really like, you know, show for it in a while. But I do advise you go to you guys go check out her books and her plays. And I think her books, you can get them online at Google and I think you might find them on Amazon. And then a result of her attending Bennett, she explored her inner self and became a bold act civil activist as she is today. And her plays are also in her favorite due to her being a civil rights activist. And those are my citations. 
All right, round of applause for Tamaya. Tamaya, um, we're, we'll hit you with some questions in the chat. Yeah, one thing that was good about all the Linda Browns, we got a little bit of different, different information in each of those. So all the Linda Brown people did a real good job of, um, on researching a lot of different parts about her life. Naja, who's up next? Cheyenne Coven and then Trinity Cromwell. Okay, Cheyenne? Um, Cheyenne's having trouble getting her Zoom to work. Let's go ahead with Trinity. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Trinity Cromwell. I am from Corbin, Virginia. My major is biology and I am a freshwoman. Today, my little bell presentation will be about Ms. Susie Powell. In this presentation, I will name four points about Ms. Susie Powell. The class of 1964, her career, writing and honor alone. Ms. Powell is a part of the class of 64 at Bennett College. This means that she was in her fresh woman year when, it, when the Greensboro Cinema started in 1960. In her senior year, she also witnessed Congress initiate the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Ms. Powell was in college and change was coming across in her cup in a place that's in the middle of the civil rights movement, the time in her life that was already changing just by going to college. Bennett and students were heavily involved in the movement in Greenboro, which affected the lives of Bennett Bells. I think this included Powell when she went into Korea. After she graduated from Bennett College, she studied at the Western Reserve Law School, where she one out of two African-American women who graduated from the facility. Ms. Powell also passed the Ohio Bar Examination, which is a license to practice law in a specific state, where she began practicing poverty law. She even sued the United States in the case of Garden Valley Tennis Association versus James Lynn. Ms. Powell then taught at North Carolina Central University School of Law professor, where he conducted trial practices and educated students on contracts. After her, oh. After her successful career devoted to racial justice and poverty law, she began writing and wrote the screenplay, The Loving Story, a documentary about two people who violated interracial laws in Virginia and are drawn into jail. Film adaption won many awards, and Ms. Powell's nominated nominated for Emmys, which are rewards for the television industry. Some of her awards are the Outstanding Historical Programming Award, the Rear Skilled of America Documentary Screen Club Award, and the George Foster Peabody Award. She also worked as a student of the Rape of Reese Taylor and wrote various short stories and articles. Ms. Powell is honor alum, alumni to college and the United Grove College Fund for a reason. Her dedication, her achievements, her support for civil rights. Ms. Powell genu genuinely cares about the Black community. Looking back at her, it's just so inspiring at how much she achieved in the time of segregation and racism, especially in a field where Black people were discriminated against. Even after her main career was over, she still achieved success when she tried to do something else that she loved. Great, I'm Ms. Susie Powell is in Durham, North Carolina, classified as an independent writing and edited professional and former lawyer. And that is the end of my presentation. Here are some quick lists of what I covered, uh, how she was a Bennett and I 
Road College Fund alumni. I'm a professor at North Carolina Central University for lawyer and independent writing and editing professional. And here is my main research sources in APA format. Are there any questions? All right, thank you so much, Trinity. No, uh, let's... Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, nice work, and we'll hit you in the chat if some questions come up. Look down at the chat. The next person is Anaya Dottie. Anaya, are you here? So is that Tamia up? Yeah, Tamia is gonna have to be next then. Okay, Tamia. Hello. Hmm, okay, hold on. Um. All right, hold on. Hmm. There we go. Hmm. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Hey, did you want to be a lawyer, Trinity? All right. Now let me share my screen. You guys can see. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I chose Dr. Alice Holloway Young. Oh, my name. Sorry, my name's Tamia Fields. Um, I am a fresh woman. I am majoring in biology. Um, Dr. Young was a 1944 graduate of Bennett College. Um, a little background of her is she lived on a farm in Warrington, Warren County, North Carolina. Um, she was the youngest of seven children. Her and her siblings farmed. They picked cotton and harvested anything that their parents decided to grow. Um, and they lived what she called a real country life. Um, they were Poor, and they lived in poverty, but they were never hungry because uh, they always had an acre of the field harvest, like before everything else. Um, her mother graduated college, but her father was not able to get an education. So, because there was no schools for him. Um, sorry. They... They moved across the border in North Carolina so they can go to school, her and her siblings. Um, she did not like school at first. Um, she, she went to school during the time when students really couldn't do nothing, where you had to literally sit in class and just pay attention. Um, her first grade teacher locked her in the closet in the dark, and she sat there and cried the whole night. Um, her siblings went home, her parents came back late at night, and she was still in the closet. And since then, she really did not like school. Eventually, she was recommended to Bennett College by a teacher, and she, that teacher ended up helping her um, write all of her essays. And she got accepted with a four-year work academic scholarship. Um, and something that she said in the interview that I watched, um, she said, but the work was work. I didn't mop floors, I scrubbed them, and I shined the brass on those big oak doors. Education. She received her Bachelor of Science degree from Bennett College. She then received her Master's and Doctoral degrees in Education Supervision and Administration from the University of, I don't know how to pronounce it, Rochester, I think. She had a lot of accomplishments, but I picked these two out. Um, she served at a local migrant camp in upstate New York and established a child care program 
and taught nutrition in 1944. Um, and she was also selected by the Rochester School District super, well, superintendent to serve as the director for Title I. Um, she was the first of a lot of things in her career. So she was the district's first African-American classroom teacher, the only African-American reading specialist in the district. She was the first vice principal and principal of elementary schools. Um, she was the first Title I director for all the programs. Um, and she was the first person who wrote and supervised the district's first integration programs. And many, many more things. Um, she won a lot of awards, as you can see. She has plenty of more on top of this. Um, and this is my citations, and I put a quote right there by James Baldwin. And it says, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. And thank you. All right, thank you, Tamia. Tamia, a couple of really good questions. Oh, cool. A couple of good questions for you. Can you deal with that question Morgan was asking you about in the chat? And also, Tamara was curious about what connect, how you connected with uh, this. Book. Um, when she was working at the camp, she technically she was recruited to go there along with a few other students. Um, and their job was basically to show what the migrant camps are like, like the real story of what they're like, what the kids go through. That was the goal of that. Um, what made me choose her? Honestly, I kind of was just scrolling through all the names and I was kind of looking, I wasn't looking for a young graduate um, Bennett, I was looking for a sort of older one, and she was the perfect one. Um, and what changed her dislike for school? Um, she said, well, I watched her interview, and she said that in third grade, there was a tornado that destroyed her whole school. Um, and so she didn't have to go to school. So she said she started to like it because she started to miss school because she had nothing to do. So when she got back in, she just started to like it from there on. Awesome. I just want to add. I just want to add that it's Rochester, New York. Rochester. I said I didn't know how to pronounce. That. I know that's why I wanted to tell you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Sometimes a trick, if you don't know the pronunciation for something, is you can look it up and get the. They have a programs on the computer, so they'll give you like a video pronunciation. That's a good way to like look things up if, if there's a word that trip, trips you up. Okay, who's up next? Next person is Tamara and then Lindsay. Okay, Tamara. Can I see my um? Can I see? Yeah, we can see. Okay, hey y'all, my name is Mara, and my notable bill, uh, project was on Hattie Carwell. She was born on July 17th, 1942 in Brooklyn, New York. Um, some facts about her is that the Carwell entrance in science was encouraged. Um, Dr. Carwell's interest in science was encouraged from her um, growing up in Asheville, Virginia. In 1966, she was enrolled at Bennett College for Women and, and earned her BS degree in science at Bennett College in 1971. She also earned her MS degree in health physics for Rutgers University of New Brisquist. I mean, New 
or whisk or something like that. Um, during Cowell career, she obtained a position with the U.S. Department of Energy and the International Atomic Energy Agency as a health physician and, and nuclear safeguard group leader. She moved to San Francisco, California in 1990 and worked with the Department of Energy as a program manager for high energy and nuclear programs. Um, Bell Carvel Carwell also became a senior facility operations engineer at Berkeley in 1992. In 1994, she was prompted, she was promoted to operations lead a position Lee, a position in which she held until 2006. She came before, she later became a science physical, a uh, physical scientist before retiring in 2008. Um, what made me choose Dr. Carwell was because I am a biology major and I was really influenced um, by my community as well. Um, I also have been like in some nuclear internships that have kind of like pointed me in different directions of the science uh, science field. And I'm also from San Francisco. In my cited page, I got my information from Bennett alum and history mark makers. All right, thank you so much, Tamara. Let's give Tamara a round of applause. Found somebody from your hometown. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lindsay, are you here? Who's up after Lindsay? Zakaya Jones Walker. Zakaya. Professor Lipsum, since she's not here, can I go? I've been waiting a while. Well, I know, but it, like, it's like everybody's got to wait. It just takes a while to get through. Um, that's, fine with, that's fine with me if Samaya wants to go before me. Because I'm, okay. I just want to take her spot, I guess. The, whoever's not here. Um, okay. 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 okay, give me one moment. Mm, do you guys remember how to do the sharing the screen on an iPhone? Like a screen. Um, okay, can you guys see it? Can you guys no, see? Not, not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do anybody know how to do it? I'm I'm trying to figure it out. Did you have to shift to a different location, Smile? Yeah, I did. So now I'm doing it on my phone. I feel like it's is it screen? Okay, start broadcast. Okay. See now. Can you guys see? Yes. Yes. Can, can you guys? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. I am from Waldorf Mellon. I am an incoming. Well, I'm a fresh woman majoring in biology. I do apologize for my scenery. I had to move due to the fact that I had horrible internet and my laptop broke. Um, but I present to you my Nobel, my notable Bell presentation, obviously by Samaya Green. So the person that I had today, what that I did my research on was Beverly Buchanan. Beverly Buchanan was an African, African American artist who changed her major so many times. And the reason I decided to choose her was because she reminds me of myself. Like when I first wanted to go to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do exactly. And because of that, that's why I say that she basically reminds me of myself. So I will introduce you to Beverly Buchanan, Bennett College graduate class of 1962. So her college career, she started at Bennett College in 1958 with a major with a major of medical technology, graduated from Bennett College with a bachelor's of, of science. And after she received her major, well, after she received her bachelor's of science, her college degree, she decided to work as a health educator in New Jersey. So who is the phenomenal Miss Buchanan? Beverly Buchanan was an African-American artist 
whose work included paintings, sculptures, videos, and land, and land art. Beverly Buchanan was born October 8th, 1940. She was known for her phenomenal arts, like I said, which included her drawings, paintings, and so forth. So her results of attending Bennett College, she earned her bachelor's degree, found her passion in art, received a 10-year career as a public health educator in the Bronx and East Orange, New Jersey. In early 1970, she shifted to a different path and began study at Art Student League. So some memorable events were she learned poem, participated in modeling, took art into consideration, and went to Bennett and Columbia University. So challenges that was faced during the process, Beverly Buchanan faced many obstacles such as racism, gender equality, and she could not afford her school. And basically, when she went through all those problems, she took all of her problems and put her issues into her art. As she said before, Miss, as I said before, Ms. Buchanan struggled with many problems during her time on Earth. Her art explored things such as issues of race, gender, and memory dealing with issues related to racial discrimination and hardship of slavery. Ooh, so, hot in this car. so this is an example of a picture of her art. So actually, this is one of my favorite, uh, one of her favorite sculptures because I don't know, it just pops out to me. So if you guys, when you guys look at it, what do you guys see? What does it say to you? Like, I, do I have any art fans that love art or anything? No. It yes. looks like a stream and a bag of chips. and uh, <laughs> That's what I thought at first, but then I had to like get deeper into it. Some bottles like, and cans and stuff. Scarecrow. Yeah, scarecrow. Like, okay. That's, that's it. So, but what does it say to you exactly? Like, when you look at art, do anything like words pop out or it just reminds you of something? I think um, it's very resourceful. Like, the fact that um, it looks like she's that just... Girl that girl is a real crowd pleaser. Mannequin. <laughs> Okay, so Medicine Woman actually was the name sculpture. It was found objects as in her other sculptures. It included wood, glass, textual paper, plastic, paint, stone, ceramics, foam pour, masking tape, metal wires, and aluminum foil. This, this was the last piece of art Beverly ever created before she, was, before she died. I don't want to say it like that. But she quote, I was always looking for something for her something to add and mix, which was called the healer. So the famous art of Beverly Buchanan. So as you can see, the top one is her shack sculpture, which was brightly colored drawing inspired by her children's memory of traditional Southern tobacco barns and small houses. Art two was an old color school, low country house and one of three families. Art three was basically a self-portrait book, which started the beginning of her ruins, ruins and rituals, which was basically her whole art theme. Accomplishments after graduation, Buchanan was awarded a fellowship, a follow, fellowship award. She earned anonymous woman award in 2002. In 2004, she was a distinguished honoree of the College Art Association Committee for Women's in the Art. And I do have a little saying or quote from her. So word of Beverly Buchanan. A lot of my pieces have the word ruins in their title because I think that tells you this object has been through a lot and survived. That's the idea behind my sculpture. It's like, here I am, I'm still here. And this quote really stood out to me because as human beings, we go through so much and we do so much, but yet we still stand great. And that's why I love not just human beings, but as African-American women. And this is my sources, and I do appreciate your time. Okay, I finished. It's, it's completed. <laughs> Thank you guys for everybody. Hey, thanks, thanks that, that, um, that, was that helpful to be able to, you got a better feed out in the car, huh? Yeah, and I'm like, like I said, I'm so sorry about like my background and stuff. It was just a lot. No, like I said, don't apologize. You can't. You know, we're all dealing with we're we're all limited by our internet connections. Mm -hmm. So thank you for going out and, sh and uh, getting to a place where you could share that. We could see how excited you were. Yeah, I really was. I'm so surprised, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Uh -huh.
<laughs> okay, yeah, you can go back. Are you going to be able to go back to your to a more comfortable place to finish watching the presentations? Yes, I will. <laughs> All right, and thank you, Zakaya. Thanks for thanks for letting her cut yeah, in. Thank you, Zakaya. I really appreciate that. Oh, of course. All right, Zakaya, now you're up. Okay. All right, um, my name is Zakaya Jones Walker. I'm an incoming, or excuse me, I'm a fresh woman majoring in psychology and I'm from Hopewell, Virginia. And today I will be telling you all about the notable life of Dr. Carolyn Robertson Payton. Um, all right, so why did I choose um, Dr. Payton? Her name stood out to me as I looked on the list, but I did more research, of course, and I found out that we're both from Virginia. Um, and she majored in psychology and went really far in her field. And I majored major in psychology. So I just thought that was a really cool um, connection. So I continued to do my research on her. Um, the life of Dr. Payton. She comes from a really close-knit family. Her father, excuse me, her grandfather was born into slavery, but um, he sought out for his grandchildren, at least, to go to college. Um, her father was a ship steward and her mother was a seamstress. I put a quote in here because I thought it was just a really good um, example of or motto for herself. So it says, who must do the hard things, those who can, and who must do the impossible things, those who care. Um, and I just thought that was a really cool way to um, represent how she lived her life. Um, so her time at Bennett. Um, I was really lucky to find a picture, a yearbook picture of her, which stated a lot of the things that she did in school. So some of those things, if you guys can't see, because it's a little small, she was vice chair of the student senate. Um, she was president of her senior class, and she was business manager of the Little Theater Guild and of the Bennett Banner staff. Um, and that's really cool because I'm into the Bennett Banner staff is, um, I believe, like the news magazine of Bennett or was at that time, and I did journalism in high school. So as I continued to research her, I just found so many things that, um, that her and I resonated in. So I quoted, it takes a bell to do it well, because she went to Bennett and she noted that Bennett was where um, she shaped her aspirations, attitudes, and expectations, and it gave her a sense of the capabilities as a woman. And I feel like that is what Bennett is for, and that's the goal of Bennett College. Um, so that was just a really cool um, quote that she said, because I, that's, the, that's the goal of Bennett. So she received her bachelor's degree in home economics, and then um, due to the separate but equal doctrine that was still in effect in Virginia, she had to continue her education at the University of Wisconsin. And that's where she received her master's degree in psychology in 1948. And then she further received her PhD at Columbia University. Um, so she has many accomplishments. Her major accomplishment is the, um, her appointment as um, the director of an entire agency in the Peace Corps. Um, but in my later, in my next slide, I have many more of her accomplishments. But um, in 1966, she was appointed by President John F. Kennedy to be the director of the Eastern Caribbean, um, Caribbean, excuse me. And then later she was appointed in 1977 as the director of that entire agency. But um, I also mentioned that she was the original member of the Task Force in Psychology of Black Women because she did a lot in the psychology field. Um, and we'll see that in the next slide. Um, so as in her time of, excuse me, in her time of the, um, of serving in the APA, um, she served in the APA for over 40 years. Um, she received many, much recognition and awards for her work. Um, she was in the committee, committee on women in psychology leadership citation. Um, she taught at Howard University. And um, I thought it was really cool that she received the, um, the last award that I mentioned, the award for the Outstanding Lifetime Contribution to Psychology, because that means, you know, she was recognized for all of the things that she had done um, in the psychology field. And I thought it was really cool that she worked to um, basically knock down walls for not only 
black women or um, just black people in general, but she also worked with the LGBTQ, which I thought it just kind of shows her diversity in helping people. She wasn't limited to one group or one thing. She was, she did a lot of things in her field. Um, okay, um, her legacy, like I said, she broke racial and sexist barriers within the Peace Corps, being the first black woman, um, the first black woman and director of the Peace Corps she was only, she was one of two women who were um, directors in the Peace Corps. So that was huge. Um, and then, like I said, through the APA, she did many different projects that helped many different groups and minorities. Um, and then for me, she just, I loved having to research her because she set an example for me. Um, because like I said, I resonated with her so well. And just seeing all of the awards that she won and all of the projects she did, you know, to be one woman, she did so much. So I said that she changed history because all in all she did, but she really just changed perspective for um, me and I hope for you guys too, as you saw through this presentation. Um, and that's it. All right, round of applause for Sakaya. Zakaya, I think we're going to be, uh, I think you're going to be following in her footsteps so we could see the passion that you had for her. Nice work. Thank you. Who's up next? The next person is Michaela Kirk. Is Michaela here? Who's after Michaela? Nia or Naya Levy. Nia, are you here? Okay, who's up next? Jana Lindsay. Okay, Jana, are you here? Next up is Sarah. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Sarah, you're here, right? There she is. Yes, I'm here. There you are. Okay. I froze. You got your screen share okay, Sarah? There you go. Is it up there? Can y'all see it? We can. Okay. Are, everybody can see this? Okay, I hope so. Um... My name is Sarah Mason. I'm a fresh woman and I am a biology major. And I chose to do my project on Dr. Joyce Martin Dixon. Um, I didn't really like have a specific reason as to why I chose her. I literally picked her and I didn't, I didn't know we were supposed to have a reason, but as I started researching more on her, I realized that she was a really amazing woman, very giving and very caring. Um, uh, the, she was a, a graduate of the class of 56. Um, and she was, she was a former member of the board of trustees and the hall, not the hall, but the center, the Martin Dixon integration, intergenerational center, which is the preschool um that we have on campus is named after her <clears throat> and i'll explain why in the next slide i think uh because okay so she gave the largest alumni gift of a million dollars to the college and in 2015 she donated a 14 passenger bus to the center and the college um her and her husband created a um, incorporation called Creative Management Technology Inc. Um, it's a well-established federal services federal services contra contracting firm, and its he headquarters is in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Um, she also has a foundation for her daughter called Linkages to Life, um, because her daughter passed at an early age due to a incurable kidney disease. Uh, she was five years old. 
um, Linkages to Life is an organ tissue and bone marrow donation awareness program. And it is credited with saving thousands of lives of, of minority female lives. Uh, she also has a scholarship in, for her son that she created in the memory of her son who died at the age of 27, I believe, due to a plane crash. Um, the scholarship is awarded to a high school student at the high school he graduated at in Wise, but I don't know how to say it. We we made in Germany. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. Um, she's also um, very prominent in the community and in a lot of organizations such as Astronauts Memorial Foundation, which is a foundation that um, recognizes like astronauts who've given their life, who sacrificed their lives for, you know, uh, in space and stuff. Oop, not in stuff. Okay, um, Commission on the Status of Women, which is a, um, I think I read somewhere, it was a, it's an organization that basically is about um, women empowerment and like the uplifting of women and how we're becoming like more prominent in our communities and in the world. She's also a part of Junior Achievement Board of Directors and American Red Cross. Um, when, I, when I picked her, I didn't know that she was a part of the American Red Cross, but when I was in high school, I also did some volunteer work with Red Cross because I needed volunteer hours for my school to graduate. And it's something I really fell in love with and I love volunteering with them. I still do to this day. Um, but I will not to this day because I had to stop due to the coronavirus, but yes, I do uh, volunteer with them. Um, some of her community organizations, oh, if you can't even see that, hold up, let me see. I can't even see that. Okay, there you go. Oh my gosh. Uh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> wait for it. Wait. Okay, she's a part of Greensboro's Public Library Foundation. Um, also, Leadership Council of American Cancer Society. Um, the Links Incorporated, which is um, a part of Linkages to Life. Um, well, Linkages to Life is also is like a branch from the Links, Incorpor Links Incorporated. Um, she's also a part of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, uh, Providence Baptist Church, and Bennett College Alumni Association. And that's all. Here's my references. Are there any questions? All right. Excellent. Let's give... Let's give our presenter a round of applause. Okay, there we go. Would you like to meet her and interview her when you come into town? Um, yes, I actually would. I, I couldn't find anything like, like any of her socials or anything like that when I was looking her up. Only thing I did find was like a background check and I was just like, uh, yeah. that's too you'll, cool. you'll find her. You'll find her reading to the students over there. So when you get into town, Sarah, Find me and then I'll take you over to meet her. Okay. Okay, so uh, real quick, I wanna just take a, a quick count. It's five o'clock now and as y'all know, we have only till 5.30. Um, just just uh, tell me with the thumbs up, how many of you still have to present, still need to present? Okay, Nyjah, Jessica, Jaya. So that's seven. And on the other screen, is it just seven? Of you? Two. Morgan. I have two. Okay. I have two too. All right. So here's what I we're going to do. Two. Of those people who are left that haven't presented, are there any of you that are not taking uh, the class next week? In other words, you're only taking OR for this week. I am. Tamisha. Is that, Tamisha, you're only taking OR for this week? Correct. And it, But you presented earlier, right? I did. Okay. So th is there anybody that, that hasn't presented yet, but is not taking OR next week? I didn't present yet. Are, are you taking OR next week? Yeah. 
Okay, so we're, we're okay because we've got a plan B, but I just wanted to make sure that if you're not take if you're not taking OR um, 100 next week, I'm gonna have you present right at this moment. But if you are, we're still okay. That's a cool looking background, Asada. Uh, okay, let's let's go ahead and, and let's keep going in the order. Haviland, I got you in the list. You're just you just ended up a little lower on the list, so we haven't forgot about you. Um, the next person is Brooklyn. <laughs> Nick. Shh, tell your dog. Shut thanks for dogs helping. up. <laughs> Okay, hi. I'm sorry, it's Brooklyn. Okay, hi. My name is Brooklyn. My name, oh. Let's start. Do you guys see my screen yet? Not your screen share yet. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I didn't. Okay. Do you guys see it yet? Like I was saying before, since we just had a Joyce Martin Dixon, make sure you really highlight the things that are new, and then you can go quicker over the things that we just heard in the last presentation. Okay, no problem. I'm not going to do that. Well, well, what I do have is her mom and her sister were Bells. Um, she graduated in 1956. Um, she um, has, she created the Martin Integrational Center. Oh, let me move this because I can't see my thing. Okay. Um, her and her late husband had um, their own creative management technology thing. I had a video, but I think it's too long and I think it's gonna go over my time. So um, it just shows like what they have, like it just shows like what they do at her center that she started. And she doesn't have like a lot of pictures and I wanted to put it in the PowerPoint, but she doesn't, I couldn't find a lot of pictures on her, which kind of sucks. So yeah. Brooklyn, you can put that video in the chat when you get done and then we, we can have a look at it. Or, okay. or play it at the end if, if you have a minute left. Okay, cool. And that's just her but at one of her centers with the kids. And um, this is tragedy in her life. Um, both of her children, well, like she said, Sarah said before, um, both her children died at a very young age. Um, her son died and her daughter died of a um, kidney disease. Um, what she did for her child. Well, I'm trying to just go over, trying to like give you some new information. Um, her daughter, um, she got a program for her daughter and then her son, they had a scholarship. Um, her and her husband were childhood sweethearts and her husband died shortly after. Um, they sold the, um, they, her husband died her husband died shortly after they sold their, um, I'm a very shy person. I'm sorry. When I do presentations, I get shy. I'm sorry. You're doing great, Brooklyn. <laughs> In between you and our last presenter, you, you're giving us a lot of things that we don't know about. So keep okay. it up. You're doing great. Before, shortly after they sold um, their creative manager, her husband had passed right after their fifth year wedding anniversary. Um, she was part of many service organizations, and here go some of theirs. Um, later in her life, two years later, she had left home in Florida and moved back to Greensboro. She helped Bennett raise money, and then she refurbished some of resident halls. Um, she gave Bennett one billion dollars, no, one million dollars, and she helped them pay tuition. She was a big contribution to the school. Um, she donated a 14 passenger bus to the college to use for field trips. She is one of Bennett's biggest alumni donors, and she's a true Bennett Bell. And what inspires me about her is how she just gets back to her community, community with no hesitation. And these are some of my resources. So, yeah. Brooklyn, go back and just play the video for a second. 
It's like a fashion show what they did with at the um community with the toddlers. Yeah. It was actually at Bennett. The students at Bennett what they did. Hi, you guys. We're here at the Intergenerational Center at the first annual fashion show. And right now, we're about to go in and see all the nice kids, and we're about to see their families, and we're going to see them strutting down the aisle and showing us what fashion is really all about. Okay, Brooklyn, pause there. <laughs> that gives us a, a little taste of it. We'll put that link in the chat, and then we can, uh, and then we can kind of go back and watch it after if we have a chance. Okay. I remember that video. Okay. Uh, uh, Brooklyn, one, one thing I want to, um, and I think, I think our, our classmates, team, our team will agree with me. Don't ever feel like you have to kind of apologize for being shy or even feel a certain way about it because um, once you present and you do that a lot, it'll get naturally better. Mm -hmm. so, so you did a good job with your presentation and you're, it's only going to get better. And this is not just you, but everybody in the class. So, so we're, we're, a, we're a, um, a group that's all here to help each other. So, so don't ever feel like you got to feel a certain way about presenting. You did a great job. Thank you. Okay, let's get uh, one more in. Who, who do we have, Naja? Deja Rogers. Okay, Deja, you're up. All right. So, let me... Do you guys see the screen? Yeah. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deja Rogers. I am a chemistry major and chemical engineering major, and I am an incoming freshwoman from Baltimore, Maryland. So today will be Notable Bell Appreciation. I am presenting on Dr. Esther Terry, who was the first alumna president and was a fresh, was a Bell of class of 1961. So her biography, she was born in Wise, North Carolina in 1939. Her family were sharecroppers or farmers and her parents were Richard Alexander and Mary Alexander, and they died in, one died in 1970 and one died in 1985. And she is the youngest of 12 siblings because of how Richard had three siblings, Mary had, not three siblings, three children. Mary had three children, and when they had married, they had more children. And she has one son who is Jules Michael Terry. So how she became an illustrious bell. For background information, Mary Alexander, who is her mother, was at first a normal student who was going to be learning how to become a teacher so that she can teach children and other people who wants to learn. And so she wasn't able to continue her education because of how she needed to help her family out with the farm. So when it was time for um, Dr. Terry to step up and get her education, her mother decided that she will be the one to go to college because she helped farmers in her community get social security and find out their ages by looking at the Bible or looking at when they were birthed or around the time they were born. And when she came to Bennett, she decided to be studying in English in theater. So Terry's experience she, throughout her interview, she said that she lived in Kent Hall, which was the honors dorm around that time in the 50s. And she thought it was wonderful to be an English and theater student. Um, she says that her teachers had always challenged her. And uh, an example can be her, how she had one favorite English teacher and he would describe a book and she would have to tell, like give him the title of that book. And the college asked the girls to give their all in their classes and made them feel like they were special, which led to their activism in the 1960s. So Dr. Esther Terry, Dr. Linda Brown, and four other bells plant the sit-ins in the chapel. 
and when they did that, they were planning it and went in one of the staff has said, you can't be by yourself while, um, while protesting, so you're going to need some men. And that's when the A&T men had stepped forward and was like, oh, I'm going to be a part of it as well. And that's how the Greensboro Four was able to sit down, and that's how they were given the title of, uh, oh, they started the sit-ins. And to go back to it, that was one of the challenges as well. She segregation, racism, and oppression was the biggest challenge for her for, because of how she experienced racism like firsthand and she wouldn't be able to sit down in certain places because white men would say that she wouldn't be able to, like it, they would just mess with her in general or mess with anyone. So who ignited the social justice in the Bells? And that was Dr. Willoughby Player, who was the first woman president at Bennett College. And she loved her students and encouraged social justice. And she was considered a stern, strong, and quiet woman to the students. And Terry said that she would even have a shadow that could, her shadow would go over the campus as if her power was a stature. And she even went to the point where she would give the Bells their homework while they were in jail. So for her accomplishments, she, um, she later went for it in her education and received her master's in English from University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She received her PhD from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and she became one of the founding members of the W.E.B. Du Bois Department of Afro-American Afro Studies. And she was there for a while at the University of Massachusetts with that department. And when she became the 16th president, that was because of how in 2009, she was a provost for Bennett. And then when, when um, Julianne Mavmevo had resigned, that's when she stepped up to be the 16th president. And so why did I choose Dr. Asseteri? Well, first, she was the first alumna president, the first of a title. And that was very powerful to me. And then this is a quote that she had told students at the end of her, um, at the end of her interview. And it says, you still have the obligation and the responsibility to make social justice and equality a part, a partner with you as you develop whatever skills you want to develop and you pursue whatever course of study you want to pursue. And this really had touched me really because I know that I, sometimes ask or try to stay in the lines of what I can or cannot do. And she really uh, like go against the odds really. And she, she became stern. She, at first she said that she was a girl from somewhere, but with Bennett, she became someone. And I know if I were to stay at Bennett, I would become someone as well. And Okay, very good. Let's give let's give our presenter a round of applause. Nice work, Deja. Okay, um, I think I hate to do this because I would love to stay around and hear a few more of these, but I think uh, I, I think we we are that the, the um, you know that program you listen to about the scarcity of time. Time is now our enemy, and it's coming up on uh, 15 minutes till we have a couple things to go over. So those people who haven't presented yet, we're gonna have you present first thing on Monday. Now, um, a couple of business matters. Um, and Haviland, you'll make the list this time. I'm sorry about that. Okay, and, it's fine. And uh, uh, Nyjah, Dr. Trusdale wanted to see your dog. Is your dog nearby? I have two, hold on. Okay, well, Nyjah wow. gets the, the dogs, I just want to ask you you all to just shout out if you have an answer for this. <laughs> I need to, before we do that, can I go, oh, yeah. pretty. Here goes one. Oh, where's the other one? And where's the other one? Right here, hold on. <laughs> You're going to see my this dad. This got to be the big dog. It's right I here. Thought, I thought it sounded like a big dog. He's right dog. here. Mm -hmm. I had a big. He's, he's black, so you can hardly see oh, him. Oh, wow, that is a big <laughs> dog. I had a big golden retriever and had to put him to sleep. 
But anyway, uh, I just want to say, ladies, you all have done an excellent, excellent job today. And I appreciate everyone stepping, stepping up to help their Bennett sister. This is what we do at Bennett College, and this is why we're so special. And I am just amazed at what you all have done in the short period of time that we had. I can only say if we had had you all on campus, which we can't wait to get you on campus, this would have just been really, really outstanding. But thank you for all of the effort that you put into your presentations. And I can tell when a presentation was done the night before or it was done the day of. So you all truly, truly did a great job. And I know some of you are thinking, well, yeah, that's exactly what I did, but it's not showing. All right, I love the way that you all, all are distinguishing the fact that you know the difference between alumna, alumnae, and alumni. So you all have really grasped that. I looked at a lot of your citations. I was really trying to hone in on your citations and the way that you had those listed at the end of the presentation. So those were done great, but we still have a little work to do on the citations. So as Mr. Lipscomb said, we're going to end now, but we will do this first thing for those of you who will be um, continuing. And I think, is it uh, Tamisha that's leaving us? You're only doing A. Who's leaving us today? Yes, ma'am, Tamisha. I have enjoyed seeing your beautiful face and all of your different outfits that you've been repping this week. We will miss you, but we look forward to seeing you on campus. Yes, ma'am. It's Thank always you. a pleasure to see you, Dr. Truesdale. It was nice meeting you. Uh, one other thing I want to say uh, for next week, for Monday, for the two to three hour, we will continue the presentations. And then we will have from 3 to 45, Dr. Santiva Campbell, who is an associate professor of psychology and our um, faculty senate president. She will come in and, and talk to you about finding your why, your W-H-Y at Bennett College. And then Dr. Ann Hayes from our global studies department will come in and let you know of opportunities that will be available to you once we can get rid of COVID. And she will have an activity for you. All right, I want to remind uh, Dr. Graves and uh, Dr. Lipscomb, we've all had students who were absent. We're gonna reach out to those students and give them an opportunity to present as well. So we may have a few more students. So we don't, we give you a second chance here at Bennett College. Uh, find out, you know, why they were asking and give an opportunity to present. So ladies, you all have been um, very engaged today. I know we didn't have a break. So at this point, I'm going to say have a great weekend. And one other thing, it is going to be mandatory beginning on Monday that you show your face. You know, we asked why you didn't show your, 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 your face. And some of you said you didn't have your hair done. You didn't have whatever the excuse was. So you have all weekend. We've had a lot of rain here in Greensboro. So I had to put my hat on today because I was having a really bad hair day. So whatever you need to do, and I love hats. I love hats. Mm -hmm. Whatever you all need to do to get those beautiful faces ready for us to see them on Monday and for the rest of the week, go ahead and do it this weekend. You all have a great weekend, and I think uh, Professor Lipsom has one other activity for you. Uh, Dr. Dr. Truesdale, what about Monday is a hat day? Everybody wears their favorite hat on Monday. Oh, I would love that. I bring my hat with me. <laughs> I can't fit a hat on top of this hair. Yeah. Right. Okay. Have whatever headdress, whatever headdress you have. If you want to flip something around, whatever you want to do. I think about it. All right. And that includes you, Mr. Lipscomb, too. I'll do it. Okay. You see, I wore my suit today. Yes. Love it. Everybody, uh, one thing just I want to add to the presentation, totally agree on what Dr. Truesdale said. 
And as you're watching other people present, do you, do you see things that you want to steal? That's one of the things I hope you get out of being a good audience. I love that you were supporting each other and writing nice things in the chat. Could somebody just speak out if there's something they saw somebody else do that they said, oh man, that worked. I want to steal that when I do another presentation. Um, I think Francie really, ooh, my camera. I love that Francie had that music in the background and it was so subtle, but you could still hear it. And it really put me in the, in the time and really in the presentation. That was really great. I agree. And then one or two others? Um, Miss Walker, is that your last name? Miss Walker? Yeah, Jones Walker. Yeah. Um, I really loved how organized and like how you had like the squares around your um, text. That was something so, I loved. So it made it easy to get the information like that? Thank you. And one more. One more thing that you saw that somebody did that you'd like to steal for your presentation. Zaka, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Zakai, Zakaya? Is it that's yeah. how you pronounce it? Yeah, I was, <laughs> she did way better than my presentation. Don't say that. It did, it did. But I'm going to steal some ideas because it looked good. Thank you. No problem. And I'll just say, for example, like, like you're up to your creativity. That thing where given information where the... Um, Whose presentation had those questions where the pre it was a, a question they guessed and we guessed and then they gave us the facts? It was Angela Nettles. Angela, yeah. So there's like little things like that that you can try because it's tough to, for three hours, it's tough to do presentations. And y'all kept positive, you kept giving good feedback. And, uh, and, and while I'm sorry that those of you who um, can't, didn't have time to go today, when we come back on Monday, you'll have a few ideas that you can work into your presentations. Uh, for homework this weekend, I'm gonna put the links up into Moodle, and I'm also gonna send you a message out to your email. And it's gonna be those four separate links for the financial presentations. Has anybody done all of those yet? Nobody's finished them all? Yes, I finished all of mine, but I sent them to Ms. Truesdale, was that okay? Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So then you're a little ahead of the game, but well, we don't, we don't want you, when we get into orientation B, we don't want you to have to do, try to be doing the financial stuff in the middle of the other stuff. Since you have a little break in action this weekend, well, we want to try, try to get you to finish those. You've done one already. So it's the other three that have to be done. And then, and finally, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you all a link and it's going to be, um, a thing that it's anonymous and it's feedback for us on the course evaluation so we can know how to continue to make the course better each time around. And this was a new time for, for uh, Dr. Graves and, and Dr. Truesdale and I trying to do it um, virtually. And we were so impressed with your effort all week. So we're gonna send you that. I'm gonna make a little um, block in Moodle and call it weekend homework. And it's all links that you can follow. So- well, Dr. Um, Truesdale, oh, never mind, I wait. Yeah. Okay, so any questions before we break for the day? And I'm going to hang around for a few minutes after class.